Canto Seven of the Lusiads. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Leni. The Lusiads by Luis Vaz de Camões, translated by Sir Richard Francis Burton. Canto Seven. Argument of the Seventh Canto. On the occasion of the famous discovery of India, a notable and poetic exhortation is addressed to the princes of Christendom, arousing them to like enterprises. Description of the reign of Malabar, wherein lieth the empire of Calicut, at whose port the Armada anchoreth. Appeareth the Moor Monsaide, who giveth information to the Gama, and eke instructeth him concerning the natives of the land. The Catual, or governor of Calicut, fareth to see the fleet. Another argument. Da fundo a frota Calicut chegada. Manda-se mensageiro ao rei potente. Chega Monsaide a ver a luz armada, e da província informa largamente. Faz gama ao Samor e sua embaixada. É recebido bem da índica gente. O regedor o mouro ao mar se torna, que de touros e flâmulas se adorna. Anchors to Calicut safe come, the fleet, sent to its puissant king and envoy goes. Monsaide comes, the Lusian ships to greet, and of the province telleth all he knows. The gama fares the summary to meet. Grace to the stranger vindic people shows. Then join the regent and the moorman high aboard, where many a flag and awning fly. Canto seven. And now the armada near the morning land, many so much desired to have seen, reigns by those indic currents moted, and by Genji, who dwelleth in the sky terrene, up, braves, and at them, on your valiant hand, to snatch victorious palms determined ben. Here ends your warfare. Here, before you, lies the realm of riches and your rightful prize. To you, O rays from Lucis sprung, I say, to whom such puny part of earth is doled, nay, what say I of earth, but of his sway, who ruleth all the rounded skies unfold, you, whom nid dangers dure, nid dire dismay, from conquering brutal heathenness withhold, but eke no greed of gain may wean from love of mother essence thrown to heavens above. Ye portingals, as forceful as your few, who e'er disdain to weigh your weekly weight, ye, who at cost of various deaths be true, the laws of life eternal to thy late. Cast by the heavenly lots your lot you drew, however poor or mean your mundane state, great deeds for holy Christendom to show. So high, O Christ, exaltest thou the low. See them, those Germans, stiff-necked, herd-like horde, who browse the pastures of such wide extent. To him, rebellious who hath Peter's war, Choose a new shepherd, a new sect, invent. See them absorbed in ugly wars abhorred, Nor yet with blinded errant ways content. Fight, not the hot tyrannic Ottoman, But the apostolic yoke they feign unspun. See the hard Englander proclaim his right Of that old sacred city king to be, Where reigns and rules the base-born Ishmaelite, Honor of truth so nude who e'er did see. Mid boreal snows he taketh sad delight to mould new mode of old Christianity. For those of Christ he bears the ready brand, not to rethrone Lord Christ in holy land. Holds for himself, meanwhile, a faithless Roy, Jerusalem city, the terrestrial, who holds not holy law, but dares defy Jerusalem city, the celestial. Then what of thee, Valgo? What need say I? Who wouldst thy vaunting self most Christian call? Not that such title wouldst ward and guard, But that the name through thee be smirched and marred. Thy claim to conquer Christian lands, Beseems one who so much and such fair land doth claim. Why seek not Sinips and the Nilus streams, Which ever hate that antique holy name? There should they feel of steel the hard extremes, who would the church's truthful song defame? Of Charles, of Louis, 
name thou didst inherit, and lands, why not of justice wars the merit? What shall I say of those who mid the lights, which vilest idols bear for manhood's bane, spend life and love to waste the gold that blights, and clean forget their ancient valiant strain? Tyrannic has to hostile act in sight, which virile races view as foul as sane. To thee I speak, O Italy, sunk by curse of thousand sins, who dost thyself adverse. Ha! wretched Christians, who such cross incur, be you perchance the teeth by Cadmus sown, that waste of brother blood ye thus prefer, when all by self same mother womb are grown? How durst you see yon holy sepulture, owned by the band dogs who such feuds disown? who come to hold and have your ancient ground, their warlike prowess making them renowned. You know, tis now their usance and decree, whereof they are observantists entire, to levy restless hosts of heavenry, and harm the hearts that dear Christ's love desire. While fierce elect amid your chivalry, for ever so with tears of wrath and ire, look, on your eyes to risks like these ye close, how they and you, to you, be deadliest foes. If lust of lucre and of lordship led your course to conquer far and foreign lands, see you not Hermes and Pactolus shed adown their fertile valleys or its sands? Assyria, Lydia, spin the golden thread, lurk veins of sheeny ore in Afric's strand. Let these rich treasures sluggish sprites arouse, since rouse you not the rites of holy house. Those fierce projectiles of our days the work, murderous engines, dire artilleries, against Byzantine walls where dwells the Turk, should long before have belched their batteries, or oh, hurl it back in forest caves to lurk, where Caspian crests and steppes of city of frieze, that Turkish ogre progeny multiplied, by opulent Europe's policy and pride. Georgians, Armenians, Grecians, hapless Thrace, cry on your name to quell the unspeakable horde that dooms parforce their darlings to embrace Alcuin's precepts, tax of blood abhorred. Prove, when you punish yon inhuman race, the sage's spirit and the soldier's sword, nor covet arrogant praise and vainest boast of vaunting valor or a brother host. But while ye blindly thirst to drink the blood of your own veins, O hapless race insane, never have failed Christian hardihood in this our little household Lusitane. Her seats are set by Afric's salty flood. She holds in Asian realms the largest reign. She sows and ears o'er all the fourth new found, and there would hasten had but earth more ground. Meanwhile, behold we what new chance befell, the seld seen voyagers who fame would earn, since gentle Venus deigned the gale to quell, and futile furies of fierce winds to spurn. When they the large spread land's appearance hail, of stubborn, obstinate toil, the bound and born, and where the Saviour see they went to sow, and throw new lords, new lights, new laws bestow. Soon, as along the stranger shores they lay, a fragile fleet that fish and people bear, they found, and by such guidance learned the way to Calicut, whose denizens they were. Thither inclined the proors without delay, for twas the city fairest mid the fair, in land of Malabar, and where abode the king, whose orders all that region owed. Outside of Indus, inside Ganges, lies a widespread country, famed enough of yore. Northward the peaks of caved and modest rise, and southward's ocean doth confine the shore. She bears the yoke of various sovereignties, and various eke her creeds, while these adore vicious Mephama, those to stock and stone bow down, and eke to brutes among them grown. There, deep in the mighty range that doth divide the land, and cutteth Asian continent, whose crests are known by names diversified, of every country where its trend is bent, 
outburst the fountains which commingly glide in powerful streams that die when travel spent in indic ocean and the arms of these convert the country to a chersonies twixt either river from this breadth of base puts forth the spacious land a long thin horn quasi pyramidal which in the embrace of ocean lies with isle ceylon to form and near the source that shows the natal place of Ganges, if old and fame of truth be born, the happy peoples of the adjacent bowers feed on the fragrance of the finest flowers. But now, of many usance, mold and name are all the tribes who have and hold the ground. Pathans and Delis urge the proudest claim to land and numbers, for they most abound. The Canis, Orias, who both misclaim salvation in the sounding flood is found by Ganges rolled, and here the land Bengal is rich in sort her wealth exceedeth all. The sovereignty of Bellicose can be, men say twas puissant porous olden reign, nor Singa's kingdom with her rich display of gold and gems, but poor in martial vein. Here seen yon side where wavy waters play, a range of mountains skirts the murmuring main serving the malabar for mighty muir who thus from him of canara dwell secure the country people call this range the gout and from its foothills scanty breadth there be whose seaward sloping coast plain long hath fought gainst ocean's natural ferocity here o'er her neighbor city's sons a doubt calicut claimeth highest dignity crown of the kingdom fair and flourishing here he entitled Samarim as king. Arrived the squadron off that wealthy land, she sent a Portingal to make report, so mote the gentle monarch understand who hath arrived in his distant port. A stream the herald struck which, leaving land, entereth ocean, and his novel sword, his hue, his strange attire, his stranger ways, made all the lieges gather round to gaze. Amid the swarming rout that thronged to view, cometh a Moslem who was born and bred in distant Barbary, mid her barbarous crew. There, where in ancient day Antaeus swayed, right well the Lusitanian realm he knew, or by the scanty distance thither led, or signed by the sword and fortune's brand to long-drawn exile in a foreign land. With Jocon Mian, our messenger to sound, for that he speaketh well the speech of Spain, he thus, Who brought thee to this new world's bound, far from thy fatherland, the Lusitan? Opening, respondeth he, the seas profound, which never openeth the race of men, for in this mighty flood we hither bore, to win, for holy faith, one triumph more. By the long voyage sore astonished stood, the Moor Monsaide, thus his name was known, when told the Lucian how the terrible flood had all the temper of a tyrant shown. But, as at Aaron's drift, he understood, concerned the ruler of the land alone, he tells the stranger how the monarch lay outside the city at a little way. And that while travel to the royal ear, news of that advent strange, if judged he meet, repairing to his humble dwelling near, to where well refreshment of the land to eat, whence by short rest restored and good cheer the twain together might regain the fleet. For life has nothing like the joy and glee wherewith near neighbors meet in far country. The Portingal, accepting not in great what glad Monsaide for his guest deviseth, as though their friendship were of olden date, eats, drinks, and does whate'er the host adviseth. Now from the city when they, making straight towards the squadron, which the moor ignized, and scaled the flagship's flank, where all the crew, with kindly glances, moor one side of you. Embraced him our chief, whom hugely pleased the well-remembered accents of Castile. Seated him near, and asketh him at ease, anent the land and folk therein that dwell. Even as flocked on rhodope the trees, to hear the lover of the damosel, Eurydice, his lyre of gold resound, the folk to hearken flocked the moor around. Then he, O nation, 
who by nature's hand was established neighbor to my natal night, what mighty chance, what destiny's command, upon such voyage drave you far and wide? Not causeless, no, though darkly, deeply planned, from unknown menu, distant tagus tide, your course o'er oceans, a by keel and ploughed, to reign such distance and such dangers shroud. God bringeth you, party, for he intendeth some special service which your works await. For this alone he guideth and defendeth from enemies, ocean, and the wind's wild hate. Know that ye look on end wherein extendeth a world of nations, rich and fortunate, in licent gold and gems of princely price, and odoriferous fumes and biting spice. This province, in whose port your ships have ta'en refuge, the Malabar by name is known. Its antique rite adoreth idols vain, idol religion being broadest sound, of divers kings it is. But t'was the reign, as olden legend saith, of only one. Height the last king was Sarma Perimol, who neath one sceptre held the kingdom all. But as this region there and then was sought by other races from the Arab bite, who Mahometic worship with them brought, the same my parents planted in my sprite, it hapt their wisdom and their prayer so wrought upon the perimal, and lit such light, that to the faith convert with fervor high, he only hoped a saint in it to die. He mans his ships and loads with merchandise, and many an offering curious, rare and rich, and their religious life to lead he hies, where lies our prophet, who our law did preach. But ere abandoned home, his satrapies, that lacked lawful heir, he parts to each and all he loved. Hence his intimates he from want made wealthy, and from serfdom free. To this Cochim, to that false Cananor, one hath chalet, another Dal Piment, a third Kulam, a fourth takes Cranganor, the rest is theirs with whom he rests content. Only one youth, for whom warm love he bore, when all was parted, did himself present. Nothing save Calicut for him remained, which by her traffic wealth and rank had gained. On him the title paramount he bestows, of emperor, with sway o'er every state, and, made this partage, there he diligent goes, where, after sentent life, he met his fate. Thus, t'was the name of Samarim arose, of all this region proudest potentate, born by the youth, and by his heirs from whom, this who now wields imperial powers come. The law that holds the people, high and low, is fraught with false, fantastic tales long past. They go unclothed, what a wrap they throw, for decent purpose, round the loins and waist. Two modes of men are known. The nobles know the name of Nayers, who call the lower caste Poleas, whom their haughty laws contain, from intermingling with the higher strain. For men who a had office in one guise, with mates of other office ne'er may wive, nor may the son the calling exercise, save sires and foresires long as he shall live. These nayers, as sin and shame, forsooth, despise the touch of outcasts, and they fain believe that peradventure, if the touch occur, a thousand rites must wash their bodies pure. In similar form, the Judean folk of old touched not the peoples of Samaria reign. But strangenesses far stranger than I've told of varied usages shall meet your eye. None save the nayers affront the manifold chances of war who like stone walls sustain their king from enemies, arms a in hand, in left the target, and in right the brand. Entitled Brahmins are their ghostly race, time-honored title of high eminence. His far-famed precepts eke they still embrace, who first to science lent a modest sense. A living thing to kill they hold as base, such be from every flesh their abstinence. Only in joys venereal their delight hath more of license in a lexer right. Come on the women are, although confined, to those belonging to their husband's blood. Happy condition, happy humankind, who over jealous wrongs may never brood. 
these and more customs various shall ye find among the malabar men still holding good great is the country rich in every style of goods from china sent by sea to nile thus spake the moorman now on vaguing wing about the city rumour wildly flew with brood of foreign comers when the king sent out his servants seeking tidings true then through the streets begirt by mighty ring of every age and sex that flocked to view came the grandees who by the king were bade to bring the captain of the stranger maid but he by royal leave allowed for land to change his floating home accompanied by his stout portingals a chosen band in richest robes to meet the monarch hide the beauteous contrasts of the hue's command the crowd's approval who with wonder eyed smiteth the cadenced oar with coolly gleam now the salt ocean then the floor fresh stream there stood a regent of the realm ashore a chief in native parlance cotwall height by noble nares surrounded waiting for illustrious gama with a strange delight now to the land our chief in arms he bore in the rich cushioned couch in litter light he proffereth as a coach and usage old which bearer people on their shoulders hold thus he of lysus he of malabar went whither sitteth waiting them the king followed the portingals in form of war for foot troops marching fierce and threatening the people buzzing with confused jar to see the strangers fain of questioning gathered but in the centuries long gone by the babel tower did such hope deny now with the catchwell gama's speech exchanged on things the occasion and the moment chose interpreteth the tongue so far estranged monsaide for the twain right well he knows thus the procession through the city ranged whither a noble splendid pile arose and reached the presence of a sumptuous fane through the tall portal spaced on equal plain here frightful forms of men's idolatries stand carved in lifeless stock and death-cold stone varied in gestures various of dyes e'en as by feigning fiend to men made known abominable forms the sight surprise with mingled members like chimera shown the christians want to see their god in men these hybrid monsters with blank wonder scan one bore two horns and sculptured on his brow like jove called ammon in the libyan wold this double faces on one form did show like two-faced janus limbed in church of old that had of arms a long divided row mocking briarius members manifold that thing a canine front external bore such as the nubis memphians did adore the barbarous gentoo in his god's abode a superstitious adoration paid then both went straight ne'er straying from the road where the vain people's king his sojourn made the streams of stairs fuller still o'erflowed for all to sight the stranger chief essayed while to the roofs and casements gazing came grey-beard and stripling damosel and dame now near they marching with no shortened stride fair fragrant gardens and perfumed bowers wherein the royal palace buildings hide the structures sumptuous though not tall in towers the chief and nobles choose to build and bide where coolie baskets teem with fruits and flowers thus dwell the rulers of the race delighting in seats the city and the camp uniting the pressing portals by their work betray subtleties telling of the deedle hand in forms whose noble presences display the hoar antiquities of india land the marvelled stories of her ancient day with such a living art and figured stand that whoso reads them with a lore exact knows from the fiction what hath been the fact there puissant armies show and proudly tread that orient region which hydaspes laves a smooth-browed capitaine is at the head and with his leafy thyrsus leads his braves by him was nisa cities established hard by the margins of the murmurous waves so proper was the god in semele her son beholding would have said tis he and there yon arrowy river draining dry the syrian peoples multitudinous bear 
a queenly sceptre, feminine seigneury, of fair the fairest, and as foul as fair. Fast by her side, with fury flaming high, her sculptured genet proudly poweth air, in whom her son a rival lover fanned. O vile incontinence, O emmernip fanned! At farther distance trembled in their pride the flags and banners of the glorious Greek, of monarchies the third, and conquering Hyde, far as the billowy Ganges sea doth seek. That youthful capitaine's semblance is their guide, whom victory's rathered palms of valour deck, who claims a seat among the gods above, no longer Philip's son, but son of Jove. While on these memories dwelt the Portuguese, thus did the catchel to the captain say, Soon dawns the day when other victories shall these thou seest dim and disarray. Here shall indicted be new histories, made by the wanderers who shall wend this way. Thus fate was found by wise and wizard men, inspired magians who the future can. And eke inspireth them the magic sense, that naught availeth to defend such ill, of all that mortals bring to their defence, for earthly wits must bend to heavenly will. It also saith the stranger's excellence in arts of peace, as in his bellic skill, shall be so puissant, all the world shall know, the conqueror's measure by his conquered foe. Discoursing thus, they reach the levee hall, wherein that great and glorious emperor sat on a cushioned couch, which, though twas small, for work and worth was never seen before, showed his reclining jest imperial, a potent, grave, and prosperous seigneur, golden his loincloth, and the diadem that crowns his brow doth blaze with many a gem. Hard by his side an old man, reverent, knelt on the floor, and now and then a few green leaves of pungent pepper did present, in wonted usage for the sire to chew. A Brahmin, personage preeminent, with gliding gait beside the gama drew, and led him up the potent king to greet, who, with a nod, designed a facing seat. When near that splendid couch took place the guest, and others farther off, prompt glance and keen, the Samarin cast on folk whose garb and jest were like to nothing he had ever seen. Then speaking gravely from his stately breast, adding authority to noble mien, and gaining credence of the king and crowd, his royal message spake our chief aloud. A mighty king there throned, whither roll voluble heavens in eternal round, where earth by earth conceals the rays of Saul, tinging the world he left with gloom profound, hearing the rumors which from distant goal respond to echo, how on indic ground Thine is the sole imperial majesty, the knot of friendship leaf would knit with thee. And by long devious courses his command sent me to say that all things mercantile, which go by ocean or which go by land, supplied by realms betwixt the Tage and Nile, from foggy Zealand's floor pole fronting strand to the far lands where soul ne'er changeth style of days, that splendid shine on Ethiop's shore, all these his kingdom holds in mighty store. And if thou wilt, with pact and firmest ties, Of naked, sacred peace and friendship rare, Allow exchange of superfluities, His earth and thine with like abundance bear, Making the rents and revenues richer rise, Wherefore men toil and travail, sweet and fair, For both the countries certes shall pertain, To him great glory, and to thee great gain. And when thus knitted friendship steadfast not, Which a you mighty monarch's twain shall bind, Prompt will he be against all adverse lot, By chance of warfare to thy reign designed, With soldiers, arms, and ships, So men shall wot, thy friend and brother, They in him shall find. He hopeth eke that when thy course is traced, By sure response to see my mission graced. Such royal message spake our chief, before the Gentu king, who thus vouchsafed reply, that to receive such fair ambassador from land so far he holdeth honour high, but
but that his final will faint standeth o'er to obtain the counsel of his ministry, who shall make certain, after long debate, what king he speaketh of, what race, what state. Meanwhile, from labors past the chief may wend where rest awaits him, and in brief delay to the dispatch he will do care extend, whereby their king shall greet their homeward way. This said, brought somber night the wonted end to human labors of the livelong day, soothing the weary limbs with balmy swoon, and tired iron with sweet oblivion's boon. The gamma, with his portingals remained, whom, upon hospitable thought intent, the noble Indian regent entertained, with feast and joy and general content. The catchwall, to his monarch's service trained, sought surest tidings, Twas his regiment, to learn how, when, and whence the folk had come, what laws were theirs, what customs, and what home. Soon as he saw the Delian car of fire, the fair youth drives, come forth and light restore, he summoneth Monsaide for desire to know the strangers new to the Indian shore. Ready and curious, now he gins inquire, if certain signs, pure proofs, the Moorman bore, Anent these foreigners, as men had said, hard by his country they were born and bred. That punctual proof particular he must bring with general information, as twould be notable service done to tell the king all that could guide him in such novelty. Rejoins Monsaide, albeit everything I leave recount, get counted not from me. I only can they bide in distant Spain where bathe my nest and Phoebus in the main. They hold a prophet's law who was begot sinless, nor stained with carnal detriment, his virgin mother, him the breath they wot of God, who holdeth earth in government. But what my sire's ancestral ne'er forgot of them is valor fierce, sanguinolent, in arms, that on their arm resplendent gloweth as many a jest with our forefathers showeth. For they with bravery better than of men, outdrave our grandsires from the fertile lease, where fresh Guadiana and rich Tagus ran with famed and memorable instances. Still seeking triumphs in far African parts, spurning perils of the stormy seas, our plans of safety and of peace they foil. They break our lofty walls, our towns they spoil. Nor less of force and fraud they showed when there kindled were other wars by fate's decree, or when Spain's warlike sons to fight would fare, or there when others poured down Pyrene. And thus, in fine, to thrust of foreign spear, ne'er bold they, owning alien mastery, ne'er yet was known. I swear no man can tell us, to Hannibal's like these e'er came Marcellus. And if my tidings faulty seem and few, what thou requirest that to ask them send, Ask of themselves, for they be proud and true, and falsehoods most annoy them and offend. Go see their fleet and arms, their manner view of moulded metal, ready all to shend. When thou unnote the Lusian's various arts, in peace and war, the sight shall glad thy heart. Flamed with desire the idle servant's mind to sight the marvels told him by the moor. He bade the boats be manned, and straight inclined to view the vessels which the gum bore. Both leave the foreshore, and their boat behind came near in hosts till ocean curdled oar. They scaled the flagship's gunwale, strong and tall, and, reached the main deck, are received by Paul. Her purple awnings and her banners shine with the rich tissue which the worm hath made, whereon appear portrayed with rare design the warlike actions of the mighty dead. Here show fierce accidents of battle line, and there fierce single fights, a scene of dread, where from the gentoo seeking all to spy, may not withdraw the pleasure of his eye. He asks of all he sees, but Gama prayed, he first be seated, and in cool retreat be pleased to taste the food before him spread, which Epicurus' sect holds highest treat. The spumy vases generous liquors shed, which first did Noah make the world to wheat. Yet knills the gentleman to break his fast, as twas forbidden by the laws of caste. The blaring trumpet which in peace the thought of warfare images rends the lift like thunder, 
the diabolic instruments fire fraught wake slumbering echoes there the sea depths under noted the gentoo all but most he sought to read the intention and the works of wonder done by the heroes which in scanty space picture mute poesy had power to trace he riseth gama rising by his side and there coelho with the moritan with curious eyen a warlike form they eyed an old white sire of aspect sovereign his name and honours in our hearts shall bide long as the world shall know the name of men in garb of grecian usage stands he died bearing the vice of leaf-branch in his right his right a leaf-branch bore but oh how blind i madly rush to tempt without your stay ye nymphs of tagus and mondego kind a path so varied long and arduous way lend me your favour while my way shall wind o'er the deep ocean mid the storms of fray for sore i fear me and ye leave the helm the waves my fragile bark shall overwhelm see how my lay so long to sing hath striven your tagus and the lusians dear to you how oft this exile fate from home hath driven new labours ever suffering losses new now tempting ocean then all helpless driven the dread mavortian risks and wrongs to rue self-doomed as canasse to death abhorred in this hand a the pen in that the sword now sunk by hateful scorned penury to chew the bitter bit of beggar bread then mocked by hope already brought so nigh to be anew and more than ere misled then with bare life in hand condemned to fly where life depended from so fine a thread only a greater miracle could save than what to judas king new life lease gave and still my nymphs twas not enough of pain such sorrow clouds around my life should close but they for whom i sang the patriot's strain with sad return must pay my toils my throes in place of peace and rest i hope to gain in the air of bay wrath bound around my brows troubles by men unseen they must invent when ills of every kind my soul torment behold ye nymphs what high-bred lords and wise breedeth your tagus what a generous race who in such fashion with such favours prize the bard whose boon hath lent their lordship's grace for coming writers what examples rise to raise men's genius to its pride of place to shrine memorias in the poet's story deeds that deserve to gain eternal glory but since such hosts of ills around me lie let not my fancy of your favour fail here chiefest wanted as the goal draws nigh that mighty feats walks mightier by my tale aid me you only long indeed swear i no grace to grant where good doth not prevail and none to flatter whatso their degrees on pain of losing all my part to please think not ha no my nymphs i would in fain the man who dares his country and his king forget for private interest pitiful claim by law of god and man a felon thing nor poor ambition whose degraded aim is to win office shall my song e'er sing whose only object in the noble prize is larger range of vice and infamies none whom his using powers on him conferred makes them the panders of his ugly greed none who to court and cringe before the herd in change of figure proteus shall exceed from me kamene fear no favouring word for him who comes in grave and honest weed in new-born rank his king contenting more to fleece and flay the miserable poor nor him who holding tis but just and right his king severest orders to fulfil holds it not justice fitly to requite the servile brows that weary sweat the still nor him whose bosom lacking practical light seeketh for causes and by prudent skill taxeth with niggard heart and hand unfair the toils of aliens which he doth not share only of men i'll sing the glorious name who risketh darling life for god for king 
when losing life they lengthened life by fame, and well deserved the best that bard can sing. Apollo and the Nine, who with me came, redoubled fury to my song shall bring, when rest and breathing from my travail tain, I to my toil refreshed shall come again. End of Canto 7《康托》Eight of the Lusias. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Lini. The Lusias by Luiz Vaz de Camões, translated by Sir Richard Francis Burton. Canto Eight. Argument of the Eighth Canto. The governor of Calico seeth various pictures upon the banners of the Armada, and heareth the account of them given by Paul da Gama. Origin of the word Lusitania glorious feats of the Portuguese kings and of their vassals till the reign of King Dom Afonso V. The Samori ordereth the Haruspices to consult futurity respecting the Armada. They report to him evil of the navigators. They attempt to destroy Da Gama, who satisfieth the king in a notable speech. Another argument. Vence de Lusitânia os fundadores, e aqueles que por feitos valerosos de alta memória são merecedores de hinos e de versos numerosos como de calecutes regedores consultam os arúspices famosos e corruptos com dádivas possantes tratam de destruir os navegantes seen are the founders of the lusian race and braves whose valiant actions brightest shine on memory's page deserving highest place and tuneful hymn and poet's numbered line. What way of Calicut the regent's base consult the famous augurs who design, bought with all puissant bribes to show their skill, and by their cunning the discoverer's skill. Canto eight. Taria the Catchwall standing mute before the first of painted forms that stood in sight, who for device in hand a leaf branch bore, with meteor beard, long flowing, flossy white. Whose counterfeit presentment this, wherefore the strange device he holdeth in his right? When Paul, with sober accents, answering sad, while the wise moor for both interpreted. All of these figures which to thee are shown, so bold in bearing, dreadful to behold, and bolder, dreader far, the men were known, in mouth of fame, for words and words of old. Ancients yet moderns are, still brighter grown, with names ingenious highest rank enrolled. This first in sight is Lucis, from whose fame our Lusitania gained her royal name. He was the Theban son or comrade tried, the god who divers regions overran. It seems he came to hold our Spanish knight, pursuing conquests which his youth began. Douros and Guadiana's plains of pride, of your Elysian fields, his fancy went so much, he there would give his weary bones the tomb etern, the term our country owns. The branch device thou seest him bear in hand, is the green thyrsus Bacchus wants to wield, which to our sentry doth believe command, he was a comrade or beloved child. Seest thou yon other treading Tagus land, the plower who long hath ploughed the wild sea field, where the perpetual walls he reared on high, and fain of palace for all memory, Ulysses tis who builds that sacred fane to her, whose favoured tongue for con supplies. If there he fired tall Troy on Asian plain, here may he mighty Lisbon's walls arise. Who have we here who cumbers with the slain the field whose furious presence frights the eyes? He drives great armies to disgraceful rout, and on his banners painted eagles float. The gentle thus, and Gama's answer came. Thou seest a herdsman who his flock forsook. We know that Viriatus was his name, who a preferred the lance before the crook. He shook and shattered Roman pride and fame. From this unvanquished victor ne'er she took. Ha, ah, no! nor ever could her power take the primacy which pious failed to break. 
not force, but fraud she used, and underhand she filched his life that cowed her coward's pride. For mighty straits make men of honest brand break the magnanimous laws of honor right. This other here, against his angry land, with us forgather, an exiled wight, Right well chose he the man wherewith to rise, and of immortal lustre snatch the prize. Thou seest, with us he beats the flags that bear Jove's valiant birds, victorious, sovereign. E'en in those days no brave so brave but wear our yoke, subjected to our might and main. See his so subtle arts, his wily care, the people by his deep design to gain. That prophet hind a dealing wise advice, Sertorius he, the dole is his device. See now this other painted flag upon of our first kings the great progenitor. Our history makes him to be Hungary's son, but strangers say Lorraine the hero bore. When with the chivalry of proud Leon and the Gallego he lay low the moor, unto Saint Sepulchre saintly Henry Hyde, that might his kingly trunk be sanctified. Say, pray thee, who be this that frights my sight? Ask the stunned man of Malabar, who all these squadrons, all these men of might, with his thin legions thus can rout and mar, who breaks such bulwarks, proud in breath and height, who gives such battle, never tired of war, who come so many crowns in many parts to trample under foot and estandards. The first Afonso tis, the Gama spake, by whom the moor all Portugalia lost, for whom fame swear her oath by Stygian lake, no more of noble Roman name to boast. The zealot, he whom God would ne'er forsake, by whose brave arm he tames the Moorish host, for whom their wallet reign he lay so low, no more is left for future days to do. Had Caesar or King Alexander led a power so puny, men at arms so few, against the multitudes unnumbered, this excellent commander overthrew. Deem not their names had earth thus overspread, nor could their deathless glorious death subdue. But leave with such inexplicable deeds, and see what worth a vassal man he leads. This, whom thou seest sighed with kindling eye, his broken pupil, fierce and high as they, bidding him rally flying hosts, and try once more the desperate fortunes of the plain, returneth youth with age to do or die, and turns the vanquished vanquisher away. Egaj Manish, the gallant veteran hide, is knighthood's mirror to each loyal knight. See him here, self-yielded with his sons he goes, naked of silk and cloth, with neck and cord, because the youth to break the promise chose, which to Castile he gave with plighted word. He lured by specious promises the foes, to raise the siege when sovereign waged the sword. To life's last pains he dooms his sons and wife, and self-condemned saves his liege's life. Less did the consul, whom the hosts surround, when to the codine forks he careless came, and there his head to bow and pass was bound neath the triumphant Semnite's yoke of shame. This, blamed at home, an inborn firmness found to yield him singly, true to constant aim. This other yieldeth self an innocent seed and wife, more glorious and more grievous deed. Seest thou the brave who, left his ambuscade, falls on the king besieging yon tall town, the town unseeging, and the king waylaid, illustrious action Mars might call his own. See him, here went he, limbed in yon or made, till eke at sea the moormen slain or flown, lost all their galleys, while he claims the prize that heads our host of maritime victories. Fuage Hopinutis, or wave and land, his name shall a resplend with equal light, reflecting flames that lit his daring hand, in moorman galleys under a billow's height. See how at just and saintly war's command, happy he loses life in holy fight, enters by moorish hands the heavenly calm, his soul triumphant with the well-won palm. Sees not this gathering, 
in strange garb that came, swarming from out yon navy new and brave, who hope our first of kings, the foe to tame, and leaking Lisbon saintly proof they gave. Behold Enrique, knight of peerless fame, and eat the palm that grew beside his grave. Through them his marvels God to men hath shown. Germans be they the martyrs Christ shall own. Behold a churchman, brandishing his cane, against a raunches which he takes, the chance of Laria venging lately tain, by men who couch for Maphomet the lands. Tis Theotonio, prior. See again, besieged Santarém, and shalt see the glance assured that figures on the muir and first wave o'er the walls the quinnel banner durst see here he hies where low our central layeth the vandal moor who in fierce fight atones pierceth the pawned host his ancient slayeth and trails this pallid pennon o'er the stones may munish he who in his life portrayeth the valor buried with his father's bones dying of these banners since his force ne'er failed to raise his own to rout what terror sailed behold that other sliding down his spear bearing two head of sentinels his slew better to hide his ambush now appear his braves whose might and slight the town were through and now her scutcheon shows the cavalier proper who holds in hand the cupid too cold ghastly heads a deed ne'er done indeed Giraldo sem pavor, the stout name read. Sees not a Spaniard, who, dissatisfied with our ninth king Afonso, by old hate of Lara moved with the Moor abide, in friendship hostile to our Portugal state? A branch's town he takes accompanied by the hard infidel his Moorish mate. But see, a Portingal with power so spare, rout him and stoutly lead him prisoner. Martin Lopes, the knight by name is known, who from the traitors palms and laurels took. But here, behold, the bishop militant shown, who changed for steely lance his golden crook. See him, mid faithless faithful found alone, fight to refuse refusing, shake and shock the cruel moorman. See, in shining skies, the sign whereby his few he multiplies. See, Fly the kings of Cordoba and Seville, routed with other twain in shortest tale, routed, nay, rather, ruined, miracle, God wrought, not worked by arm of mortal frail. See Alcácer, low ban her haughty will, the tars of flesh, no walls of steel avail, against Lisbon's bishop, Dom Mateus, see, crowned with the palmy crown, there standeth he. Behold, a master of Castilian line, a port and go by right of birth, or run, Algarve's kingdom till she shones no sign of men at arms his forth hath not undone. By guile, and might, and main, and star benign, towns, castles, cities, all are stormed and won. Soon, spite her townsmen, to villa town he breaks, and for the seven slain hunters vengeance takes. See him, with bellic arts from Mormon gain, silves, they gained with enormous host. Paio Correia tis, who might and main and cunning purpose men a envy most. Nor pass the fighting three in France and Spain, who won a name that never shall be lost, for tourney, challenges, and joustings gave, winning of public trophies proud display. Seize them, how clapped adventurers they came, Castilward, whence alone the prize and pride they bore, the winnings of Bologna's game, as to their loss all found a fall who tried. See them strike down the knights of proudest fame, who of the three the principal defied. Tis Gonzalo Ribeiro, name so brave, hath not to fear from Levi's whelmy wave. To one attend, whose fame so far extendeth, that with no fame of old she rests content, who, when his country on a thread dependeth, lends stalwart shoulders to the burthen bent. Seest not how anger flushed he reprehendeth the coward throng suspicions cold and lent, and makes the wretches hail the gentle reign of home-born king, not foreign suzerain? See him, with daring and advice replete, God guarded only, and by holy star, make possible the impossible, and defeat one-handed, proud Castilia's power of war. 
see how by valor aided might and wit in second slaughter victory similar he gains o'er those who fierce as infinite dwell betwixt tartessus and guadiana's vale cease not already all but overthrown our lusitanian power when left his line the capitain devout who wends alone to invoke that essence the most highest shrine now see him summoned hastily by his own who plead that fortune must par force incline to whelming force and pray his presence cheer the soldiers and enforce their feeble fear yet see the careless holy confidence wherewith tis not yet time he answered as one in god reposing trust immense of human victory won by heavenly aid in so pompilius hearing the offence of enemies urging o'er his land the raid to him who brought the heavy news replies but i you see am offering sacrifice if one whose bravery rests his god upon perchance thou wouldst know how named and known portugal scipio is the name he won but nuno alvarez claims more renown happy the land that bear her such a son or rather sire for long as suns look down on earth where ceres and joy neptune reign for such a scion she shall sigh in vain in the same warfare see what prizes gaineth this other captain of a slender band driving commanders he the drove regaineth which they had lifted with audacious hand see how the lance again in gore he staineth only to free at friendship's firm command his thralled friend whom honour made a thrall pero rodriguez tis of landroal look on this treach tour and how he payeth his caitiff's trickery and his perjury fell gil fernandes of elvas tis that slayeth the wretch and sends him to his proper hell Herring Zeris plain the crops he layeth, with floods of blood that raineth proud Castile. But see how Hui Pereira's face in front, and shield the galleys bearing battle brunt. See yon seventeen to Lucis who belong, upon this hillock standing, life defend against the Spaniards, who four hundred strong, to take them captive in their rear extend. But to their sorrow, these shall find ere long the stout defenders also can offend fit dying to last till earth succumb to time in the far past in present day sublime how the three hundred braves twas known of old did with a thousand romans battle wage in the good times when virile deeds and bold which Viriatus did illumined his age he snatched memorious triumphs from their hold bequeathing this our noblest heritage the brave though few shall ne'er the many fear as it in thousand times we proved full clear pedro and henry view those infants twain of kingly john to generous progeny that gars his fame illustrious to remain in german land and doometh death to die this prince inspired by heaven claimed the main as her explorer and laid bare the lie of tumid moor's vain boast in satyr's wall and forced the gateway entered first of all ceased country pedro daring to support two sieges laid by barbary might entire and ceased yon other count who shows the port of earthly mars in martial force and fire sufficeth not to fence alcacer fort from swarming hosts his spirit flieth higher his king's beloved life the brave defence at stonewall standing till his own he ends and here the painters who in art prevail party had many painted and portrayed but fail their pencils and their colours fail prize praise and premium of art's life the bread fold of the vices flowing from the entail of men degenerate who so far have strayed from valour's paths where trod their lustrous sires deep mired in vanities and low desires those high illustrious fathers who gave birth to generations on their grace depending fought for fair honour sternly strove on earth to found a family that could bear descending blind if paternal toils of priceless worth one name fame claim so far and wide extending they leave their lesser sons but more obscure 
when left in crapless vice to live in pure. Alls there be others, sons of wealth and might, who to no lordly tree by birth belong, fault of the kings, who oft some favorite prefer to thousands, wise and true and strong. For these the painted past hath poor delight, feeling vain colors work them present wrong, and a as natural foe in hate they bear the speaking pictures which their semblance wear. Again say I not, that some of high descent from wealthy houses, men of generous train, still with their noble lives and excellent heritage titles worthily sustain. And if the light which ancestry hath lent, no novel glory by their doings gain, at least it faileth not, nor dim it groweth. But, ha, ah, few men like these the painter knoweth. Thus Gama's eloquence told the mighty deeds, disclosed by various tints to stranger view, where art to singular artist hand concedes the painting nature with her natural hue. The casual's ready glance distinctly reads the third mute story in the tale so true. A thousand times he asked, a thousand heard, each tasteful battle which his eye preferred. And now the light a doubtful luster showed, when veiled the mighty lamp its lucent ray beneath the sky's round rim and luminous glowed on our antipodes the smile of day. The generous crowd of nares and gentles rode off from the stalwart ship on homeward way, seeking repose and sleep's delicious swoon to weary beans night tide's gentle moon. Meanwhile, those augurs who must fame affy in false opinion that by sacrifice forecast the future things which dubious lie through diabolic sign and show they wise, by royal mandate hide black arts to ply in various offices gain exercise to find what projects brought across the main unheard of foreigners from unknown Spain. By demon aidance truthful sign they learn how doth this novel visitor pretend a yoke perpetual servitude eterne the race's ruin and its valor's end. The mazed augur, whom the proofs constern, went to the king and tells, e'en as he kenned, the fearful symptoms that had met his sight by victim bowels brought anon to light. These signs confirming to a priest devout, a man of mark in Mathematis creed, from preconceived hatred not remote against holy faith that doth all faith succeed in the false prophet's form of evil note, who drew his being from slave Hagar's seed, Bacchus the hateful in a dream appears, whose hate is doubled by redoubled fears. Guard ye, my children, guard ye, thus he spoke, from snares and perils laid by deadly foes, who o'er the tumid waters hither flock, before the danger more immediate grows. The moorman, startled by these words, awoke in visionary fear, but soon arose the thought that vulgar dream his brain oppressed, and thus returned he tranquil to his rest. When Bacchus thus returneth, Knowest thou not the mighty maker who the law devised for thy forefathers, he whose will you wot and lacking whom had many been baptized? I wait for thee, for me dost sleep thou sought. Then by the future soon shall be advised how these newcomers come with bane and ban to break the laws I taught to silly man. Until this feeble folk full force hath won, contrive resistance in all manner ways, for easy it is upon the rising sun, firm eyne to fix on fear of blinding race. But when to zenith hath his race been run, the strongest eyesight that would dare to gaze remaineth dazed, and so shall ye remain, unless ye let them ere the root be tame. Then, with the dreamer sleep away he speedeth, trembling remains the astonished haggarine. Springing from couch his slaves bring light he biddeth, the fervid venom festering in his spleen. As the pale dawnlight which the sun precedeth displayed her angel cheek and brow serene, convoked the doctors of the turpid sect, he of his vision renders count direct. Divers opinions couched contrary are told and heard as each best understood, as to waylayings, argued treachery, were worked and woven in their vengeful mood. But shirking treasure which made danger dree, they sought the spilling of the stranger's blood with 
plots and projects of the subtlest school by bribes the rulers of the land to rule with golden bribe rich fee and secret gift they strive the country principles to please showing with proofs discreet of notable drift how shall perdition all the people seize these be they say a folk of scanty thrift rovers who run from occidental seas piratic rapine is their sole design sang roi sang roi or human or divine ha how behooves the king who rules aright to choose his counsellors or his friends beloved by rule of conscience virtuous inner light whose pride sincere affection long have proved the man exalted to that dizzy height the kingly throne of things from note removed can gain no notice sure no knowledge clear save what that visor's tongue will teach his ear much less i counsel kings to rest secure in the clear conscience of the men who show of humble pauper cloak the form of lure ambition happily lurketh rags below and men in all things pious just and pure often of worldly knowledge little know for ill shall trustful innocence take part in mundane matters when god holds the heart but each and every casual gross and greed the puissant rulers of the gentile herd gained by the glossings of the hellish breed unto the portingals dispatch deferred whereon the gama whose one only heed despite the mischief by the moormen stirred was at the kingly feet sure sign to lay of the discovered world left far away worketh for this alone as well he knew that when sure tidings and clear proofs appear arms armor ships and men would send anew manuel the king who rules the realm some peer that to his yoke and law he would subdue the globed earth and e'en the watery sphere himself was nothing but the diligent hand that pioneered the road to orient land the gentle monarch forth he fears to find that with dismissal he may wend his ways seen already how the moor's black mind would bulk his heart's desire by long delays the king who if by tales of forged kind amazed were would not so much amaze confiding fully in his augur's troth confirmed too by moorman's wordy froth feels fear of freezing his ignoble breast burneth on other hand a base desire which ever held his spirit in arrest flaming with lucre's lust's unquenchable fire the richest prophet sees he manifest appear in future if with truth entire he make just contract and its consequent gain for long years offered by our lucian reign hereon the counsellors whom the king most prized different counsels and opinions dealt for those whereby he wont to be advised money's almighty magic might had felt to call our valiant captain he devised and him when come thus spake now an thou wilt here in my presence own the rude clean truth thy felon action still shall claim my ruth the message say they and i understand thy king hath sent me is a falsehood vain no king doth own thee ownest thou no land but leadest begging life upon the main say who from ultimate hispanian strand or king or lord past hope of cure and saint would send his navies or one ship to stray over such distant oceans dubious ways and if great wealthy kingdoms doth thy king sway as thou sayest with kingly majesty what rich rare presents do i see thee bring earnests of doubtful unknown verity the splendid robe the costly offering betwixt high king and king link amity i hold no valid sign no certain pledge the pleas of vagrant seamen may allege if as hath hap to many a high-born brave perchance in exile be your lot to roam my land shall lend you refuge and shall save for every country is the strong man's home if ye be pirates housed upon the wave own it me fear nor infamy nor doom for in all ages life to save must be the primal law of life's necessity he thus the gama who divined the game perfidious with a cunning treasure played by jealous mahometic hearts whence came the foul suspicions which the king misled with high-souled confidence as did beseem 
commanding credence which he merited, bowing to Venus as to Delius Hest, preferred this answer from his prudent breast. If man's original sin in hoary time, whereby sore fall became our hapless fate, had never caused the cup of deadly crime, the cruel scourge of every Christian state, with enmity to brim in every clime, for Adam's sons with falsity innate, O King Sublime, of that foul turpid sect, ne'er hadst thou held me of such deed suspect. But, sithens not is won or good or high, some stumbling blocks, and sees each nobler deed on fair hope's footstep, fear a following eye, which on its bosom sweat delights the feed, but seems thou dinest little to rely on this my very truth, nor takest heed of other reasons which regard thou must, didst thou not trust to men unworthy trust. For, an I be a robber, rapine fed, undivigous, far banished from mine own, how can I, thinkest thou, so far have sped to seek these seats unseen, these realms unknown? By what false hope, what love of profit led, should I, mid angry seeds my lot have thrown, Antarctic rigors and the fires of air, which they who dwell beneath the ram must bear. If thou demand that gifts of high degree must the good credit of my words maintain, I came but stranger climes and skies to see, where nature chose to set thine ancient reign. But if my fortune grants such good to me, home to return and fatherland regain, by rich and splendid presents thou shalt learn the sure tidings of my glad return. If this my visit chance inopnate seem, that king should send from far his spirit strength, know that yon noble heart and bosom deem no jest, no possible feat to great and grand. While seems it fitting that the thought supreme of Lusian spirit should at least command larger belief and faith of loftier flight, and hold it boundless in its height and might. Know that long ages passed, since our old kings with a settled purpose again propose to conquer toils and travails manifold, which aid to noble plans their power oppose. They oped hostile seas that fain withhold from mortal man the boon of soft repose. They willed to trace their bounds, to track their shore, the farthest margin where the billows roar. Conceit right worthy of his branch so blessed that venturous king, who ploughed in primal rank the waves and drave from out his well-loved nest the last possessor of Mount Abila's flank. He, by rare genius, toils that never rest unto one plank conjoining other plank, disclose the parts where shine in clearest air Argo with Hydra, Ara with the hair. These early seeds abundant harvest bore, and waxed our bosoms braver, till we came, little by little, stranger paths to explore, developing each an antecedent aim. The latest dwellers on the Blackmoor shore, Austral, whose eye ne'er saw the sevenfold flame, were seen by us when left behind in turn, whatever peoples neath the tropic burn. Thus, with firm bosom, fixed resolve to win, we vanquished fortune, and we snatched the prize. To harbor this thy new-found kingdom in, we taught the crowning column here to rise. Cleaving perforce, clean through the liquid tin, horrible tempests, importunities, to thee we come, and only pray from thee some sign and signal which our king shall see. This king be truth, nor deem that I would make for such uncertain good such petty gain, which being my words untrue, mote be the stake, such long proemium forged false in vain. Liefer would I my rest unending take, on the fierce restless bosom of the main, by mother Thetis, rocked, a pirate thou, who makes his wealth by making others poor. If then, O king, this honest truth of mine, thou take for what it is, one fold, sincere, aid us, to our dispatch thy heart incline, and gust of glad return to mar forbear. But on my tale appear some faint design. Heed thou my pleadings, proved so fair and clear, as seen by judgment likes that never fail, for truth is strong, and truth shall a prevail.
the attentive monarch felt assured content when thus da gama proved his discourse conceives in him reliance confident and the firm trust that lent his language force he weighs of every word the full intent pondering the pleading from such trusty source and gins to hold as men by self deceived those caitiff catchels who had bribes received jointly his lucre lust claims firm effect which loose in contract shall he hopes ensure hope bids him listen and far more of fact the captain's honour than the crafty moor in fine he biddeth gama high direct aboard and thence from hurt and harm secure the fittest stuffs from traffic shoreward send against his spicy stores to truck or vend the stuffs to send in fine he gives command which in gangetic realms the rarest be if aught of value brought he from the land where ends the shore and where begins the sea now from the royal presence venerand the captain seeks the port to make his plea before the catchwell honoured with his charge for loan of boat as his were all at large for boat whereby to board his ship he pleadeth yet the bad regent plotting novel snare wherein to trap the stranger not conceded but stay and hindrance straightway doth prepare then faring from the quay his guest he leadeth far from the royal palaces and there where kens the monarch not of such intent would work the mischief which his malice meant when reached the distant site he gan to say fitting conveyance should be soon supplied or to the dawning of the crest and day the passage to defer he best aside but now perceive it from prolonged delay the gama how the gentle was allied with the deep plotting moor's revengeful brood truth he had not here to understood this catchwell also gifts and bribes had ta'en tempted like others by the moslem folk eke was he chief who held the guiding rein of all the cities neath the samarin's yoke from him alone the moormen looked to gain their base and wicked wills by hook or crook he who in concert vile with them conspires despaireth not to glut their ill desires to him the gama with much instance praise for passage shipward but without avail for thus had order given as he says the proud successor of the perimo what cause of hindrance here why these delays to land the stuffs and goods of portugal subjects perforce obey what kings command who dares their dreadful orders countermand that bribed catchwall lent no heed as due to the high words nay more he racked his thought to find some subtle fantasy anew some deep and devilish scheme some monstrous plot or how his brutal steel he might imbrue in that detested blood he ever sought or how the vessels he might blast and burn that none and not therein may home return that none to fatherland return intendeth and nothing less the moslems fiendish plan so ne'er shall ken how far and wide extendeth the owen land our sovereign lusitan in fine goes not the gama whom forfendeth of those barbarian hordes the ruling men lacking his permit none might leave the beach as all the boats were borne beyond his reach to the chief's reasons and rough words replieth that idle worshipper he must commend to bring near shore the fleet that distant lieth so mote it easier be to board and land a foe or thief the tactic it implieth when in far offing thus the vessels stand quoth he for ne'er shall true and trusty friend from those he loveth danger apprehend should gama seeth in each wily word the catchwell's drift who fain would bring the fleet nearer where dire assault of flame and sword were ready made for wrecking mortal hate his thoughts he scatters better aid to afford he seeks in fancy's realm some cure discreet some counterplot against evil plans prepared in fine he feared all for all he cared as being reflected by the burnished bright mirror of steel or glass plate crystal clear which sometimes struck by ray of solar light in other part restrikes the dazzling glare and waved by wanton hand of curious pride about the house to sparkle here and there where walls and roofs the shimmering species place though rest its tremulous fitful quivering rays 
so did his vaguing judgment fluctuate, when captive Gama's memory brought to mind Coelho, lest he peradventure wait ashore with boats as by command design. With message privately sent, he warned his mate, fast for the fleet his homeward way to find, lest he fall lightly in the bitter lace he feared the fierce fell work of Moorish race. Such should be he who would, by grace of Mart, follow the lustrous in their fame outvie. His nimble thought must fly to every part, see through, and escape the danger ere tis nigh. The soldier instinct rare and subtle art must read, mark, learn his baffled enemy, note all in fine. Nor shall that captain's lot be praise of mine, who pleads, I thought it not. Insists the Malabar his guest remain prisoner, till orders bring the armada near. He constant, fired with hot hydas name, hears every menace with unfrightened ear. Rather shall he the weight on self sustain, which vilest malice born of hate and fear machinates, than to shade of risk expose his liege's navy riding safe from foes. That lifelong night endurance vile he lies, and of next day apart when he ordains once more to see the king, but leave the nice the guard that not a few of men contains. To tempt with other tricks the gentoo tries, fearing his monarch pay him for his pains, and shown the malice which must soon be known, if there a longer time the stranger won't. He bids him order every stuff be brought straight shoreward, all he hath of vendable, that they might duly bartered be or bought, for who Nils commerce war is one to will. Though knows the Gama what felonious thought and damnable desires that bosom fill, yet he consenteth, for right well knows he, with these same stuffs he buys his liberty. Concertly now the black moor shall prepare, launches and lighters fit the wares to land, to trust his boats our captain did not care, where phone might capture or might hold in hand. Put forth Dalmadis for the beach to bear, his pennion stuffs, the best he mote command. He writes his brother, fearing all delay, to send the bales that shall his blackmail pay. The merchandise now landed is ashore, whereby that greedy catch will sustain. Alvar and Diego guard the store, with leave to truck or vend as best they can. That more than duty, than obedience more, in rules the ignoble breast of lawless men, well doth that pagan to the worldling show, for gain the goods he let the gumma go. He lets him go, for in the goods he thought to hold sufficient pledge and pawn that may a better penny to his purse be brought than if for longer time our chief he stay. The gumma, certain that no more he ought to land, and haply counter fresh delay, and to his vessels being now restored, resolves with tranquil mind to buy the board. Aboard the ships he bides with mind at ease, till seen what circumstance the days shall show. For now his spirit no reliance cease upon that bribed regent, vile and low. Here let the casuists who riddle these see how the wealthy as the wantful too are ruled by lucre in the noxious thirst of gain that guards us there and do the worst. By Thracia's sovereign Polydora is slain, only to have and hold his wealthy store. The guarded edifice may not contain the Cretius' daughter against the golden shar. So raged Arpeia's avarice insane, that she in truck for shining yellow ore the lofty towers to the foe betrayeth, and stifled, crushed, the price of treasure payeth. This obes of warded fort, the vulvert wall, maketh the felon friend his faith forgo. This changeth noblest thing to vilest thrall, and yieldeth captains to the luring foe. This maketh purest maiden foully fall, and know no fear, no wreck of honor trow. This art and science shall at times deprave, blind sanest judgment, consciences enslave. This loves to gloss with subtler sense than meant the texts. This maketh laws and laws unmaketh. This tainteth subjects with a traitor taint. This in the patriot king the tyrant waketh. In he, self vowed to the omnipotent, as proved by thousand instances, forsaketh. God's way by gold's enchanting siren wood. 
yet haply showing still some tint of good. End of Canto 8《Canto Nine of the Lusiads. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Lini. The Lusiads by Luís Vaz de Camões. Translated by Sir Richard Francis Burton. Canto Nine. Argument of the Ninth Canto. Now, freed from the snares and perils which threatened him, Vasco da Gama quitteth Calicut and returneth to the kingdom, Portugal with the glad tidings of having discovered oriental india venus directeth his course to a delicious island description of that same island landing of the navigators festive shows wherewith they are there received the soldiers by the narrates and da gama by thetis another argument parte de calicucho lusitano com as alegres novas do oriente e no meio do tume do oceano Vênus lhe mostra uma ínsula excelente. Aqui de todo o bem sofrido dano, acha repouso assaz conveniente, e com ninfas gentis o mais do dia em festas passa e jogos de alegria. Fareth from Calicut the Capitain, bearing glad tidings of the Orient, to whom, a middle of the tumid main, Venus displays an island excellent. Here, from all nobly suffered loss and pain, Rest and repose they find convenient, and with the gentle nymphs the livelong day they pass in wassail and in love's fair play. Canto nine. Within the city long remain it pent, nor found a purchaser or factor twain. The wily infidels by foil and feint made every trader cease from trade and gain. For all they purposed and hoped and meant was there the stout discoverers to detain of India, till arrived the expected fleet of Meccan vessels and the foe defeat. There, where the city crowns the Red Sea bite, founded by Egypt's royal Ptolemy, and from his sister's spouse our sinewy height, to Suez change it in our modern day, the harbor lieth at a distant slight from far-famed Mecca, raised to high degree, by the false superstition and profane, the holy water of the Moorish men. Gida the Haith is titled, where the trade of all the Red Sea shorelands flourished most, whereby was great and grateful gain conveyed unto the Soldan who possessed the coast. Hence to the Malabars by contract made with the infidel tall ships, a potent host, each year fair sailing over Indic seas, stocking their teeming holds with spiceries. Upon these ships firm hopes the Moors had set, in as their puissance was so much the higher, that these who sought their gain so grateful great, they might consume with crepitating fire. For the good succor all confiding weight, and from the explorers not they now require, save to retard their sailing in such sort that the famed Mecca fleet should make the port. But he who rules the heavens and human race, who for whatever will it hath his will, the fittest causes from afar doth trace, which shall his provident effects fulfil. Pitiful accidents of ruth and grace dealt to Monsaide, who, with guarded skill, devoted self da gama to advise, and gained his rightful guerdon, paradise. He, whom the Moorish shroud might not suspect, being like them a Moor, but firmly thought a villain member of the villain sect, Unveil the frauds with foulest treasure and fraud. The ships by distance from the shore protect, In stealth with pious heart full oft he sought, Mourning the causeless evils that ordain Malignant hate and vengeance saracen. He warns the weary gama that their maid, Due from Arabian Mecca year by year, Is that whereon his fellow's hope is laid To be the deadly arm of certain snare. They sail with armed hosts amain, he said, and Vulcan's horrid thunderbolts they bear. So may ye readily fall an easy prey, as you be poorly furnished for the fray. And eke the Gama, now considering, the time had come for him to quit the port, 
and that no gladder tidings from the king he could expect who doth the moors support the factors left ashore straight summoning he bade them haste aboard and lest report of such a flitting might their flight impede he bids them privately their steps to speed but in the shortest space had rumour flown on resonant wing nor here as wont did lie that both the factors were in prison thrown when found attempting from the town to fly without delay the true report was known to the shrewd captain who incontinently reprisals dealt on certain who had sought the fleet to traffic with the gems they brought now those detained are merchants grave and old richards of calicut in good repute and in their absence all their brethren hold the ships withhold them and full true the brood but in the fleet are mariners brave and bold the capstan's men and each in several suit is told to task these hold the cables in those with hard breasts to show the bars begin others to yard arms hanging on let go the sail that bellies with a bellowing sound yet the king heareth louder sounds which show that fast the squadron feareth homeward bound the wives and children die to die of woe for their lost loved ones crowd in tears around the samarin and piteously complain from these their fathers mates from those are tame forthwith the lucian factors he restoreth with stuffs in fullest tale and all tax-free despite the rancorous moor who all abhorreth so might the prisoned lieges rendered be pardon for his deceit the king imploreth the captain greeteth far more glad to see factures than phrases here sets loose some blacks and making sail adown the coast he tacks down coast he tacketh for he comprehendeth that with the gentle king to her labor vain to knit those peaceful bonds which he intendeth should strengthen commerce and her object gain but seeing how the glorious realm that trendeth aurora ward must a well known remain with these glad news he seeks dear fatherland should tokens taking of what things he fend he taketh eke some malabars aboard par force the fellows by the samarin sent when were the factor prisoners restored of purchased stores he taketh hot piment nor is of bunda the dried flour ignored nutmeg and swarthy clove which excellent makes new Moluccan isle with cinnamon the wealth the boast the beauty of ceylon all this was gathered by the deft design of drew monside born aboard the fleet who thus of angel influences dying is registered in christ his roll call writ blessed african whom clemency divine in prison gloom with gospel light hath lit who thus couldst find from country forced to roam the way to mortal men's true heavenly home then turning from that coast of torrid heat the venturous proors their southing courses bend where nature pleased to place her farthest meet the good hope cape where ostrich shorelands end bearing the joyful news and hopes to greet their lisbon homes from morning land they went again resigned to sneers of terror spread by seas uncertain glad withal in dread the joy once on dear land once more to view sweet home and kith and kin to sight again with whom old voyage feats we face anew and tell of climates strange and stranger men to taste the honeyed draught of praises due by long mischances toil and ill and pain each hath of pleasure such a perfect store the shallow vessel of men's heart brims o'er natheless the cyprian goddess who ordained had been her lusitanian sons to guard and by the sire etern had been constrained through ruling ears to lend them watch and ward the glory gallant toils and travels gained the wheels that nobly suffered ill's reward for them ordaining was who did intend all their sea sorrows in sea joys should end in thought revolving for a season brief how they had faced the mightiest sea that flows and thinking how the god sorgal in grief worked who in amphinian and thebe rose she had already planned right glad relief 
a prize outweighing all their passing woes to find them rare delight and gentle rest deep in the liquid crystal's tranquil breast something in fine of that repose so sweet refocillating bodies weary when for these her wanderers and pay interest meet of toil that shorteneth life of short-lived men then to secure the ear it seemed fit of her son god whose might of grammary can the gray the high divine to low terrene and raise our human clay to heaven serene and dilly pondering all her thoughts incline there to be spread upon their watery way mid waves of ocean stream some isle divine with bloom enameled and with green regay for she hath many where her realms confine with the first mother girt by bosoming bay besides those gardens of the midland seas within the portals oped by hercules there tis her will the watery damsels await the coming of her hero train the nymphs who worthily bear the name of bells for eyne a pleasure and for hearts a pain with choirs and dances and by potent spells bring secret hordes of love their love to gain that all should labor with the best of will the youths they love with lover joys to thrill erst so she schemed for the son she bare to her anchises that he welcome found in the fair country where by subtle snare a single ox hide spanned the spacious ground she seeks his aidens whom she may not spare fierce cupid in whose force her forces bound that in as in her old enterprise he aided aid he now to pluck the prize yoked to her chariot are the birds whose song doth exequies of death in life's own tide and they whose figure took in sign gone long peristera who plucked the daisies pied behind the hasting goddess troop the throng all through the lift with billing kisses glide where e'er on windy wings the goddess flies with gracious movements she serenes the skies now o'er the idalian mounds her car impendeth where for her coming waits her archer's son who mustering potent host with it intendeth to fare on famous expedition and rebel worlds the bell till he amendeth those direful errors long by mortals done who love goods given by the gods above for men to use and not for men to love he saw actaean hunter so austere so blindly bent on snatching brutal prize that to pursue some ugly beast and fear far from the human form divine he flies the boy for vengeance sweet as tis severe charms with chaste dian's shape his hungry eyes then let the forester take him careful heed lest his loved hounds upon their hunter feed he sees the wide world o'er how every lord for public welfare not doth rack nor feel he sees that none the boon of love afford save where philotia counsels selfish weal he sees how men who sit at royal board for words of wisdom a prefer to deal in sale of flatteries vile which ne'er permit the tears be weeded from the fair young wheat he sees that men to poverty who owe duty of holy love and charity live only power to gain and wealth to show pretending justice and integrity of ugly tyranny breeding astrous woe they coin a right with vain severity laws they devise in favor of the king laws which the lieges favor down they fling he sees in fine none love as all should love save that which dealeth only ill delight nor for a longer time doth it behove to waive a punishment as dire as right he bids his summoned ministers to move armaments fitted for that mortal fight he lists engage with yon misgoverned crown that hath till now a legend disavowed of these small winged impis a band is set to varied labors in their several crafts these on the grindstone piercing piles to wet and those to shave and thin the canny shafts soothes every labor love sweet canzonet wedding strange chances to the song that wafts sonorous melodies and roundels gay suave is the song angelical 
the lay. The mortal furnaces wherein they forge it, for their swift arrows points that penetrate, with fiery hearts by way of fuel are gorged, and vitals vital still that palpitate. The tempering waves wherein the tips were merged, are lovers' tears in love unfortunate. The live bright light and never failing fire is ever burning, ne'er outburnt desire. Some hide their dexterous hands to exercise on the rude vulgar's hard and feeling hearts, re-echoed through the welkin frequent sighs of victims smitten by the shaft that smarts. Fair be the nymphs who deal the remedies, dear to the hurts they deal, and such their arts, the sorely hurt not only they revive, but boon of life to life unborn they give. Beauty is the many, while the few are plain, consonant with the quality of the wound. For to heal venom spread through every vein, the bitterest theriacs oft the best are found. Many are doomed, a eh, to wear the chain, by subtle bond of weirdest witchery bound. Thus haps it mostly, when the darts acerb, are armed and tinctured with the poison herb. And from such wilful shots discharge some aim, wherewith those awkward imps a joy to play, arise a thousand loves that mar and maim the victims wounded in such wretched way. In of the heroes boasting highest fame, a thousand impious loves the sight dismay. Such was May Biblis, such the Cineran, this youth Assyrian born, and that Judean. Ye too, my lordlings, oft have seen the hour when love of shepherd lass your souls hath smit. And ye, my ladies, oft the cowless boar hath mashed your ladyships in Vulcan net. These waiting nocturnes to the trist faint score, those scale the casements and o'er pentiles flit. Yet hold I mainly that such loves undine are more the mother's than the son's design. Now the light chariot on the green depose the pure white signets, slowly, softly wending, and Dionea her conjoined shows roses and waste of snows is seen descending. Her boyer son, who dareth have no pose, to greet her hasteth with due smile and bending, while of the little cupid lads a band crowdeth to kiss the queen of beauty's hand. She, to save precious time from vanities, whispers, the boy embosomed in her arms, confident thus, Dear son, whose hand supplies the firmest footing of my chiefest charms, son, on whose powers my par a relies, thou, holding cheap Typhea's dread alarms, her force by thine and force, an urgent case, bringeth thy mother to bespeak thy grace. The Lusitanic toils well hast thou kenned, whom I for ages watch with tenderest guise, since swear the parquet unto me, their friend, they shall adore my name, my favour prize. And, as their feats of armed prowess shan all feats of rival Rome, I leave devise some mode of aidance in what things I may, far as our force or men extendeth sway. And, seeing how hateful Bacchus hath beguiled with mortal plots their course on antic plain, and how by wavy ocean's injuries foiled, rather than tired they were lost or slain, I will that in the sea to them so wild, mid ever restless waves the rest be tame. Here shall they gather guerdon sweet and glorious, of toils that make the names of men memorious. Wherefore, I pray thee, son, forthwith go fire the nearest maidens on their deep sea ground, burn they with Lucian love, bring warm desire to these explorers of a world new found, all in an islet joined in glorious choir, an isle unknown in ocean depths profound and bowled, I will haste on high to raise where lovely Flora with her zephyr plays. There, with a thousand sherbets, odorous wine, delicious viands, perfumed breath of roses, in singular scenes of palace crystalline, fair couches, fairer what on couch reposes, with thousand joys and vulgar shawl and fine, each nymph await the brave her fancy chooses, and all, love smitten, longing to bestow what whole can figure or what eyes can show. Tis my good will that in the Neptune reign, my place of birth, a fair brave race be born, 
with a shrewd proof shall be to worlds malign, and to the rebels who thine empire scorn, that naught shall save, Nemur Adamantine, ne trist hypocrisy, these men forsworn, ne'er shall these earth things hope their selves to save, when burn immortal love fires neath the wave. This willeth Venus, and her willful boy obeys, and flies to see her will be done. He bids them bring his bow of ivory, with golden-headed arrows, many a one. The Cyprian, with glad jest of wanton joy, within her chariot receives her son, and slacks the bridles for the birds whose song the Phaetonian death wailed loud and long. But Cupid warneth that still wants their scheme, a famous go-between of high degree, who, though a thousand times she bolt his aim, a thousand times firm friend preferred to be. Gigantia was the goddess, daring dame, Vainglorious, boastful, false, and true was she, who sees with hundred eyes, flies everywhere, and that she sees a thousand tongues declare. They went to seek and send her on in state, to blow her trumpet of the clearest strain, and so the wandering braves to celebrate, as never mortals could such phrases gain. Now fame, with murmuring sounds that penetrate, flies through the deepest grottoes of the main, and scattereth truth believe it true to be, for fame's own gossip is credulity. These goodly lords and rumours excellent, the hearts of God and goddess Willem fired, by Bacchus and to harm the heroes bent, changed it, and with something like his love inspired. The feminine bosom, ever diligent, and shifting will, of settled will soon tired, now crieth cruelty, shame, and overzeal, for such high valour evil will to feel. Meanwhile, the lither lad had loosed his bow, shaft urging shaft. Loud groans from ocean rise. They pierce, point blank, the waves that restless flow, these straight, those whirling in a spiral guise. The fair nymphs fall and breathe the secret throw, the bosom burden of their burning sighs. Each falls are seen the face that makes her die, for oft the ear hath loved before the eye. Now of his ivory loom the cusps drew near, with might and main the indomitable boy, who fired that Thetis more than any fear, for that was she to love the coyest boy. Now of its arrows is the quiver bare, nor lives in seaplane nymph her life to joy, and if the wounded breathe a living breath, tis but to savour that they strive with death. Give way, ye tall cerulean waves, give way, for look ye, Venus brings her medicine, showing the snow-white belling sails that stray, or swelling crests of billows Neptune. That thou reciprocal response convey, O ardent love, to longings feminine, and honest modesty must ne'er withstand whatever Venus deigneth to command. Now the fair near a choir itself enrolled, and side by side the gentle bevy sped, with tripping dances, usance known of old, straight for that island with her Venus led, and there the goddess gan to all unfold her thousand feats of loving hardy head. They, to be victims of sweet love prepared, each trick would try, and dare what e'er she dared. Cutting the broad highway, the vessels ride, o'er ample ocean seeking home's dear shore, wishing but cool, sweet water to provide, for their long voyage briny waters o'er. When all atones with start of joy descried, Love's isle rise lovely, stretch their eyes before, As bursting radiant through the morning air, Rose Memnon's mother, delicately fair. The beyond and bony island afar they hail, By Venus wafted through the wavy flood, E'en as the zephyrs waft the snow-white sail, Whither the sturdy fleet fast sailing stood. And lest unheeding pass the crews, and fail there to take harbour, as she will they should, ride on their courses through her lovely bar, that accidalian of omnipotent power. Firm and immobile she disposed it where she saw the seamen seek and shape their way. So fixed stood Delus when Latona bare Phoebus and her who joys in forestry. Thither the hurrying proors through ocean tear where bends the seaboard in a little bay, quiet and curved, upon whose snow-white sand 
her rosy shells through Cytheria's hand. Three fairy hillocks, threefold headlets show it, swelling superbly gracious to the sight, whose greeny clothing, grass enameled glowing, in that fair joyous island of delight, while glassy clear three limpid fountains flowing, from peaks with gleaming verdure decked and dyed, and from the milk-white rocks derived flow fugitive wavelets prattling as they go. Down a sweet dale that dints the hillocks glide the sparkling waters to their trysting place, and make a table of so fair a tide never could fancy such a landscape trace, or hang it graceful groves on every side, like one who bendeth pranking form and face, and in the crystal mirror joys to view his proper semblance and resemblance true. Skywards a thousand trees rise tall and straight, apple with odorous fruitage passing rare. Here Thorange painteth on her dainty freight the hues that burnt in Daphne's burnished hair. Droop slow crushed earthwards by her juicy weight, the citron glowing with her saffron gear, lemons with scented spherlets decked and dressed, mock budding honors of the maiden breast. The forest groves that clothe the hillock's shrine with frond and ringlets, fronts and heads array, all city's poplars with the laurels twine, loved by the laurel Fairfax, the lord of day, and Cytherea's myrtles with the pine of Cybele to strange amour a prey. The spiring cypress pointeth to the skies, where man hath built his air-based paradise. Pomona's choicest gifts spontaneous grow, and all in different taste and gust abound. No want of culturing hand these arbors known, without in culture better fares the ground. Cherries with Tyrian tincture purple glow, and Morris eke that mimics Emmer's sound, while from her patrial Persia land the poem flourisheth fairer in her foreign home gapes the granado tints in carnadine whereby o oh ruby shent is all thy sheen raised by her husband elm the happy vine beareth her buried birth he red there green and ye o oh pears if long your boughs design with luscious pyramids to deck the scene busk ye to dure what hurts and harm may wreck to your soft flanks the bird's injurious beak. The gorgeous tapestry, rare colors blending, and robing rustic earth with rainbow dye, makes Achaemenia's webs the less resplending, yet softer shades on somber veils to lie. Here the Cephisian flowers, his head low bending, eyeth the lakelet lucid as the sky. There, sinuous grandson's sun still bleeds in bloom, and... Paphian goddess, still thou wilt his doom. T'were hard, in sooth, to judge which case be true, Where similar splendors mantle earth and air, If fair Aurora lend the flowers her hue, Or if the flowers lend her hue so fair. Their zephyr aided Flora to bestrew, Violet with colors love one lovers wear, With iris red and freshest bluff of rose, which on the damsel's cheek all beauteous glows. The snow-white lily, with the roary tear of dawn tide dripping, and the mangerona, letters on hyacinthine leaves appear, hyacinth, loved by son of lone Latona. Each fruit and flowering daisy shows full clear that fain would glorious rival with Pomona. Then, if the birds disport on airy wing, earth has a joyance for each four-foot thing. Along the streamlet sings the snowy swan, Perched on her spraylet answereth Philomel, Startled at tea and stands no more to scan His horny forehead where the waters well. Here the fast levered flies the hunter-man From densest thicket or the shy gazelle. There, hurrying homewards to her darling brood, The light-winged birdie bears the grateful food. Mid such a freshness swift foot sprang aground, our second organets far left the fleet, where in the wood depths willing to be found, stroll the fair nymphs as though no fear they weed. These waked the zitter's soft pathetic sound, those made the harp and flute sing song as sweet, and bearing golden boughs appeared a few, the prey pursuing 
they did not pursue. Thus taught their tutoress in such teaching wise to scatter careless o'er the hill and plain, so might the baron seem a doubtful prize, first burn with hot desire the prize to gain. Some maids, whose natural charms the veal despise, in pride of sovereign beauty justly vain, casting all art's adulteries aside, bathe their pure bodies in the pearly tide. But the stout seamen, when their feet were set ashore, all hastened to greet the strand, nor was there any who his ship had quit some hopes of finding game upon the land. None think such game that needs the spring the net on those fair hillocks thus would come to hand. So bien, so bony, so benign a prey, by Venus cast, love wounded in their way. Some, with the fingered arm and arbalest, hoping to slay the horny heart or hind, in sombre bosks and valleys hotly pressed, determined vert and venery to find. Others, in shadows that high noon arrest from scorching verdant turf, to walk inclined along the gentle rivulet's grassy reach, or the white pebbles purling to the beach. Begin with sudden start the youths to spy, variegate colors glance through greeny boughs, colors that catch the judgment of men's eye, as not of natural bloom, ne flower, ne rose. But fleecy lane and silk of different dye, dress that with double force desire endows, wherein the human rose herself enshrines, and art enhancing nature brighter shines. Loud cries Veloso, marveling at the sight. My masters, wondrous game, quoth he, is this. If yet endured that olden pagan rite, the grove be sacred to the goddesses. Here meet we more than what a human sprite ever desired, and right well we wiz, excellent wonders and great things here lie, by nature veiled from man's imprudent eye. Follow we fast these goddesses, and spear, and they be phantasm or divine indeed. Does he, and, fleeter than the fleet-foot deer, all follow coursing o'er the river in mead. Between the branches flying nymphs appear, haply with more of hurry than of speed, and slackening pace with shrieks and laughter gay, each yields her graces as her greyhounds pray. From this the breezes golden tresses blow, from that the robe's frail hem is reft aside, high burns desire, enkindled by the snow of living loveliness so sudden spied. One falls a purpose, and her fall doth show by loving languor more than plaint her pride. She wills her followers stumble, falling o'er the lovely quarry on the pebbly shore. Others seek other places where the stream reveals of bathing nymphs the secret charms, who startled gin to fly with shriek and scream, as though surprised by rude assault of arms, while others feigning to feel less esteem for fear and shame than force view false alarms, plunge in the break and give to greedy eyes, denied to grasping hands the goodly prize, that, who in hurry to resume contrives the modesty that marks the hunter maid, hides in the wave her limbs, another strives to snatch the garment on the stream-bank laid, Youngling there is who in the river dives, all clad and booted, lest too long delayed, by doffing garments he should miss the game, to quench in water love's consuming flame. As hound of hunter, crafty beast and ware, taught cripples to retrieve from brook or tarn, seeing the steady tube upraised in air, covering the well-known quarry, duck or hern, ear heard the crack, beneath the side to bear, he plungeth, certain praise and prize to earn, and swimmeth barking, thus the brave made free to seize the fair, no Phoebus sister she, Leonard, a soldier whom good gifts adorn, a knightly bellamore and delicate, who was not once the prey of Cupid's scorn, but ever dreed love's lifelong spite and hate, he who so long believed he was not born to love luck being heir unfortunate, not that he held all hope beyond his range, when destiny shall deign his doom to change, here willed his fortune, he should wing his way, chasing the fairest daughter of the wave, a fear, leaf to make him dearly pay, that which forgiving nature to her gave. 
spent by the rays he stayed his steps to stay o thou to beauty's cruelty to crave when of my life the palm to thee is died ha ah, wait this body since thou hast its sprite all rest of running weary nymph divine each yields her wishes to her enemy's will why to the wood alone fly only mine who told thee i am i who chase thee still if told thee so mine angry doom malign which always dogs me always to mine ill believe it not in i when i believed each hour a thousand times my heart deceived tire not thyself to tire me for if i must chase those flying charms and chase in vain such is my fortune and thou wait and try her will perverse shall never gar me gain wait if thou wilt i would again descry what subtle mode of scape for thee remain and thou in fine shalt note and fain confess so tra la spiga la man qual mure messo ah, fly me not in so may time foot fleet ne'er from thy youthful beauties urge his flight for only stay the twinkling of thy feet and thou shalt vanquish fortune's dure despite what emperor nay what mighty host there meet the force arrayed by chance's furious might which in what e'er i wish still hounds my way this canst thou do thou only and thou stay wouldst in my role of foes thyself enroll to back the stronger is not bravely done would steal my liberal heart that was so whole lose it me then the faster thou shalt run burdens thee not this soul my masculine soul which in those threads of glancing gold was spun, tangled thou bearest, or thus won the prize, has light and fortune, which so heavy lies. In this sole aspirance thee, my fear, I chase, that or thou weary her sad load to bear, or haply shall thy beauty's magic grace have power to change her sour malignant star. And if this change she sees this useless race, for love shall smite thee, gentle lady fair, and thou shalt wait when love shall smite thee sore and if thou wait what wait i want i more no longer fled the lovely nymph to play her sad pursuer's heart her part to try as still to revel in the lovely lay which told the soldier's loving agony bending her brow that beamed a holy ray all bathed with sweetest smiles of gentle joy she falls a victim at the victor's feet melted with purest love by dear defeat ha me what hungry kissings wake the wood what choirs in suavest unison acclaim what pretty pettings what coy pettish mood which pleasant laughter presently became what morn and noontide saw and understood as venus joyed her lover's joys to flame were better far to experience not to judge Yet judge it he whose fate such boon shall grudge. This way, in fine, conform the fair and bright nymphs, and each bride with love her groom and dowers. All heads are crowned with chaplets of delight, of bays and gold and amaranthine flowers. Their soft white palms they pressed in wedded plight, with formal phrase and stipulating powers that pledge for endless time their mutual faith, honor and joyance to life ending death one chiefest she whose mended proudly led the nymphs obedient vassals of her throne Silas and vestus progeny twas said as by her queenly bearing might be known who over earth and ocean glamour shed the noble captain dying such boon to own with honest princely palm comes forth to greet as for such great egregious lady meet and told the station and the name of her in high exordium with high grace ornate her cause of coming gan to him prefer by the high influence of immobile fate and oh before his eye the general sphere of vasty regions cease unnavigate the secret knowledge couched in prophecy which he and his alone deserve to see taking his hand in hers she guides her guest straight to a towering head of hill divine whereof a splendid pleasance is the crest plated with purest gold and crystal shine therein the greater part of day they rest where loving play and lasting pleasures reign the queen enjoys her loves in palace bars 
the nymphs in sylvan shades amid the flowers thus fair and brave in fittest union meet while minute by the merry hours of delight and taste the genial gladness rare as sweet which their long labors and dark days turn bright men's high heroic deed and daring feat of famous force the world shall a requite with guerdon merited and boon sublime a name and fame that stand the test of time for all our ocean maids so fair so sprightful Tevis and eke her isle of angel ground none other thing be they but the delightful honors that make our human life renowned that high preeminence and that glory rightful are but the triumphs and the brows be crowned with palms and bayrets wandering gaze and praise such the delights my fabled isle displays these immortalities in young world feigned by men who cherish toils of noble aim there on olympus starlit heights attained on inklet wings that soar to deathless fame whose deeds of daring do the guerdon gained by dint of endless toil and moil we name the path of virtue stony steep to sand but joyous glad delicious sweet at end were not but prizes brother men in power in change for feats immortal sovereign to that baronial host whose arm and art made to be gods that had been only men jupiter phoebus mercury and mart aeneas romulus and the theban twain ceres diana juno pallas were but human flesh to human weakness heir yet fame that trumpet of men's high emprise on earth bestow them names of strange estate godheads and deathless semi-deities indigities and heroes grand and great wherefore o ye who fame's fair guerdon prize if in the world with these ye leaf would made awake from slumber shake off sloth and knave that sinks men's freeborn soul to soul of slave and brittle every sin with iron bit reign that ambition which o'erreigns your race in thousand fashions and the base conceit of vicious tyranny breeding vile disgrace such tinkling honors gold so counterfeit to true and honest worth ne'er raise the base better to merit and the meat to miss than lacking merit every meat possess or give us peace and laws impartial deal that bolt the rich from plundering poorer men or cloak your forms in coats of flesh and steel and crush the law of hostile saracen thus shall your valor raise the common wheel all gaining ampler none a smaller gain deserved rights shall to you be rife with honors all relief of human life thus shall ye serve the king ye love so dear now with your proffered counsel sagely bold than by the sword that shall your names appear to dizzy heights where trod your sires of old to tempt impossibilities forbear who wills a finds a way and thus enrolled your names shall rival this heroic band and gain fair greeting in dame venus land end of canto nine Canto ten of the Lusiads. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Leni. The Lusiads by Luis Vaz de Camões. Translated by Sir Richard Francis Burton. Canto ten. Argument of the tenth canto. Tevas inviteth the navigators. The science prophetic song, wherein she toucheth upon the principal achievements and conquests of the Portuguese viceroys, the governors, and the captains in India until the days of don juan de castro tides with da gama ascendeth a mount whence she showeth him the spheres terrestrial and celestial the description of the globe especially of asia and africa the navigators quit the island and pursuing their voyage happily reach lisbon another argument as mesas de vivificos manjares com as ninfas os lusos valerosos ouvem de seus vindouros singulares façanhas em assentos numerosos mostra-lhes tetes tudo quanto os mares e quantos céus rodeiam luminosos 
a pequeno volume reduzido, e torna a frota ao tejo tão querido. At table spread with life restoring food, company by their nymphs, the Lusians bold hear of their future singular and good, and daring deeds in numbered verses told. Tidus displays them all that ocean flood girdeth, encircleth heaven's luminous fold, dwarfed to a scanty volume, when the fleet homewards her well-loved Tagus flies to greet. Canto ten. Now had the glowing amorist, who won fair faithless Larissius' love, inclined his steeds where lies, girt by the great lagoon, to Mistitum, the western world behind, Favonius' breath the branding of the sun cooleth and o'er the natural tanks his wind crisps the sea-mirror, and awakes the lily, slumbering with jasmine through the noontide stilly. When the fair nymphs, who each her lover led, hand linked in hand, conforming and content, trooped where the radiant pleasance reared its head, all gay with gold and metals lucident, when bade the queen that tables there be spread, with varied viands chosen, excellent, for loved and loving vigor to restore the powers which love from weary nature bore there on the radiant thrones rich crystalline sit the blithe couples cavalier and dame while on the golden dais in state recline the lovely goddess gama loved by fame delicious dainties delicate divine that antique egypt's luxury sink to shame heed the huge chargers of the tawny gold from far Atlantis' treasury hither rolled. The wines of fragrant scent, not soul excel, for Lerna's vintage, proud Italia's boast, but in the ambrosia Jove esteems so well, and eke esteems his sempiternal host. In cups where steely file may not prevail, they spume crisp foam that glads men's innermost bosom, and warms his heart with sudden glow, and with ice-water tempered leap and flow. Told were a thousand tales of joy and mirth, sweet smiles met subtle sayings warm with wit, which to discourses and that gave double worth, and sharpened edge to blunted appetite. Nor of the harp harmonious was their dearth, which in profoundest pit the naked sprite a while can respite from eternal pain, sweetened by siren voice of angel strain thus sang that nymph the fairest of her kind her discant echoing down the whole sublime with consonants of instrument combined and all conforming to one tone and time a sudden silence husheth every wind and makes the wavelet plash with softer chime while salvage animals in natural air to slumber charmed the dreamy music hear her voice of silver raiseth to the skies the coming race of barons high renowned, whose prototypes were shown to Proteus' eyes within the hollow spheres diaphanous round. Jove's goodly present and the choicest prize given him in vision. To the realm profound the tale prophetic told he, and the maid in memory depths the glorious history laid. Subject of Buskintis, and not for Sark, what in that vast lake the nymph made known, things from Iopus hid in Demodoke, Fiashin this, and that of Carthage town. Thee, my Calliope, I now invoke, and in this mine extreme labor, thou alone canst for my writing to my sprite restore the gust of writing, which I joy no more. My ears glide downwards, and my summer sprite mergeth in autumn, passing, ah, how soon! Fortune by genius chills, and loves to chide, my poet's soul no more my boast and boon. Hopes long deferred bear me to the tide of black oblivion, and eternal soon. But deign to grant me thou, the muses' queen, to praise my people with my proper strain. Sang the fair goddess how the wide seas o'er from Tagus' bank when Gama cut his path, shall sail strong navies, conquering every shore, where Indic ocean sucks his mighty breath. How all the kings who gentle gods adore, and there our yoke reject, shall rue the wrath of hard and hardy arms, with steel and low, till low to Gama, or to death they bow. Of one she chaunted, 
that in Malabar held of the priesthood highest dignity, who, lest be loosened with the singular, bearns the knot of love and amity, shall see his towns, his cities in the war, with fire and sword and wrath and cruelty undone, which potent Samarin shall wage against the stranger, such shall be his rage. And each she singeth, how shall join the fleet in Belém moored to bathe this deadly bane, when of his burden not could ocean weed, our great Pacheco, Achilles, Lusitane. Lo, as he entereth, all his way shall greet the curved timber and the fervid main, as in the waters every keel that groaneth sits deeper swimming than its nature owneth, but hardly landed on those orient ends, and, leaving with the royal unbeliever of Cochim realm, some native troops where bends its salty branches Cochim's snaky river, the nair's infernal bands he breaks and rends in the past cambalum, where at shall shiver with freezing fear the orient's fiery glow, seeing so few, so many men o'erthrow. The Samarim shall summon fresh allies, kings hurrying come from Biper and Tanor, and where Narsinga's serried crests arise, vowing high valor to their grand seigneur. Lo, at his bidding every nearman hies that dwells twixt Calidcut and Cananor, two hostile peoples linked at war's demand, by sea the moormen came, gentus by land. Again shall scatter all their strong array, Pacheco, grandly bold on shore and main. The mighty Mani he shall crush and slay, and be the marvel of the Malabar plain. Again shall dare the pagan sun delay to offer battle for his bitter bane, taunting his host and offering vainest vows, his deaf and dumb and heedless gods to rouse. No more the passes only now defending, he shall with fire consume Thorpe, Fane, and town. The hound walks to wood to see with toil unending his fenced cities on the plain bestrown, shall drive his soldiers, life so freely spending against Pacheco, who with wings hath flown for double movement, but at single bout, hither and thither, all he puts to rout, shall come in person, Samarin fight to dare, to cheer his forces, and fresh force and join, but soon a bullet singing through the air, shall stain him red in lofty palanquin. Not now availeth him, ne wildness near, ne force Pacheco deemeth like to win. He shall vain venoms deal, deal treasons base, which a gain less of gain by God's good grace. He shall a seventh time, she sang, aspire, the brave beleaguered Lucian to assail, whom toil and travail lack the strength to tire, but save confusion, nothing shall avail. Then shall he bring to battle, dread and dire machines of timber, unknown, terrible, to sink the carvels by the board assail, when force and fraud both tried alike have failed. On water plain, upheaping fiery hill, he now shall tempt delusion fleet to flame, but soldier science and the warman's will, the strength shall weaken wherewithal he came. Near hath a barren fame for martial skill, that starward soared on the wings of fame, Rivel this, who poems from all hath won, illustrious Greece or Rome, my words condone. For such fierce battles in such manner gained, by a poor hundred or a few more, such fight, such feints, such strength, such strategy sustained, so many hounds not heartless hurled to flight, such feats, I say, must seem as fables feigned, or that the hosts of heaven invoked a light earthward to aid him, shall to him impart daring and doing, heart and warrior art. Nor he who in the campaign marathonian, Darius, mighty powers, piecemeal rendeth, nor with four thousand men Lacedaemonian, he who the past Thermopylae defendeth, nor youthful cocklers of the strain Osonian, who with the whole Etrurian host contendeth, the bridge to hold, nor Quintus Fabius, heir, like this in war showed strength and sour fear. But here the nymph's triumphant measure dies, shifting to sadden murmur, low and slow. She sings mid tears, and ill-suppressed sighs, 
the mighty jests that did no gratitude know. O oh, Belisarius, thou who a shalt rise in ninefold choir and ever nobler grow, if Mars dishonor didst behold in thee one to console thee, here thy shade shall see. Thou hast a rival, not alone indeed, but in his dolence and his guerdon dower, and thee and him two breasts of noblest breed we see degraded to low state obscure to die in spital on the bed of mead who king and law like wall of iron secure thus do capricious kings whose will demandeth more than what justice or what truth commendeth thus do the kings who drunk with flattery feel the charm of show that gains their hearts content the doles of Ajax's arm, the do they deal to tongue of vain Ulysses' fraudulent. But, O oh, revenge, these goods of little wheel, wasted on those who ghosts of good present. If brave and gentle knights miss all their grants, such grants but glut their greedy cycle fence. Yet thou, who paidest in such sorry ways, such liege, O oh, king, unjust in this alone, if ne'er twas thine to give him great and praise, twas his to give his king a golden throne. Long as Apollo bathes with blessed rays this ball of earth, I swear, shall A be known amid the great and good, his name and fame, and thine for Everest A shall bear the blame. See now, she sang, another comes in pride of the blood royal, and he brings from home the sun whose name shall sound o'er ocean tide, high as the Romans in best days of Rome. The two, with warrior arms to hearts of pride, shall deal to fertile Kiloa dreadful doom, and crown a gentler king of loyal strain, who ends the tyrant's fell perfidious reign. Mombasa's city, with her brave array of sumptuous palace, proudest edifice, the faced, the formed by fire and steel shall pay in kind the tale of bygone malefice. Thence on those Indian shores which proud display their hostile fleets and warlike artifice against the Lusians, with his sail and oar shall young Lorenzo work the extremes of war. What mighty vessel Samarin's orders own, covering ocean with his iron hail poured from hot copper tube in thunder tone, all shall he shatter, rudder, mast and sail. Then, with his grapples boldly, deftly thrown, the hostile emerald he shall assail, board on her, and only with the lance and sword shall slay four hecatombs of moors abhorred. But God's provision escape in human sight, alone who knows what good best serves his kind, shall place the hero where no toil ne might his lost young life of bailiff to forfend. In Chow Bay, where fierce and furious fight, with fire and steel shall ferve its seas of fen, the infidel so shall deal that end his days where Egypt's navy doth conjoin Cambays. There shall the power of manifold enemies, for only stronger force strong force can tire, and winds defaulting, and fierce injuries of ocean gainst a single life conspire. Here let all olden men from death arise to see his valor, catch his noble fire. A second Seva, see who, hacked and torn, laughs at surrender, quarter holds in scorn. With the fierce torture of a mangled thigh, torn off by bullet which at random passed, his stalwart arms he ceaseth not to ply, that fiery spirit flaming to the last, until another ball clean cuts the tie so frail that linked soul and body fast, the soul which loses it from her prison fleets, whither the prize etern such conqueror greets. Go, soul, to peace from warfare turbulent, wherein thou meritedst sweet peace serene, for those torn tortured limbs that life so rent who gave thee life prepareth vengeance scheme. I hear in now the furious storm ferment, threatening the terrible eternal team of chamber, basilisco, sacred fire, to mamelu cruel and cambayan dire. See, 
with stupendous heart the war to wage, driven by rage and grief, the father flies, paternal fondness urging battle gauge, fire in his heart and water in his eyes. Promise the sire's distress, the soldier's rage, a bloody deluge o'er the knees shall rise on every hostile deck. This Nile shall fear, Indus shall sight it, and the Ganges shall hear. As when some lusty bull would train and teach his limbs for cruel fight, with horns he playeth, on trunk of builder oak, or mast like beech, and wounding empty air his might essayeth. Thus ere his kills come by as gulf can reach, Francisco, fierce with vengeful ardor, prayeth on the bull, opulent harbor, wets his brand, and baits the tumid bragging of the land. And soon shall scatter, sailing up the bight of dew, and feign for siege and battle dread, Calicut's strong armada, weak of fight, that trusts to paddle steely mail instead. She of Melikeias, who boasts her might of balls by thee, O Vulcan, scattered, shall see her carvels to the floor deep sent, where hidden sleeps the humid element. While she of Merhosem, which linked fast with grapples, waits the venger side by side, shall sight the lopped-off arms and legs float past sun owner bodies o'er the shifting tide like flamey bolts on earth by thunder cast in blinding mist of blood the braves shall ride their knot shall strike the shrinking ear and eye save fire and steel flesh shout and slogan cry but ah that homeward from such wars victorious bound for the tagas of his fatherland he nigh should forfeit meet so great and glorious by sad black chance i see in fortune's hand the cape of storms that guards his name memorious shall guard his bones nor blush shall stain its strand that noble spirit from the world to tear egyptian strength ne'er tore nor indian snare their salvage kaffirs shall have power to do what ne'er could do with the power of dexterous foe, and the rude fire-charred club and staff subdue, whom ne'er subdued ball nor artful bow. Forsooth his judgments hide from human view. Vain fools who vainly judge what none may know, call a misfortune, term a fate malign, what is but providence pure, all wise, divine. But ho, oh, what lustrous light illumes mine eyes, resumed the nymph, as rose again her tone. There, where Melinda's blood-dyed ocean lies, from Lamo, Oja, Brava town or throne, by hand of Cunha, such a deed ne'er dies, or farthest seas his name shall a be known, that lave those Austro islands and the shore, St. Lawrence, hide and ring the wide world o'er. This light is glance and glare of lucent arm, wherewith your Albuquerque's hand shall tame, the Hormus Parsi's heart, which be his harm, refusing gentle rule as yoke of shame. There shall he see of shafts the stridden swarm, in air revolving with recurved aim, upon his archer, for our God shall aid, who holy faith of Mother Church would spread. There the salt mountains never shall defend corruption from remains of men that met war's doom, and o'er the seas and shores extend of germ isle masket and calate till by pure force of arms they learn to bend the subject neck and pay the scot of fate compulsion sore this wicked rain shall vex and die of pearl that barren's oyster decks what wraths of glorious palms i see them weave wherewith by victory's hand his head is crowned when he some shade of fear or shame shall wreathe illustrious goa's island world renowned see forced by need's hard law his prize to leave he seeks new favoring chance and soon as found the taken he retakes such arm and art shall conquer fortune and the self of mart lo he returns and bursts what dares oppose through bullet lens plum steel fire strongest hold breaks with his brand the squatted host of foes, the serried moor, the gentoo many-fold. His inklet soldiery more of fury shows than rampant bulls or lions hunger-bold. 
that day for ever celebrate and dine of egypt's martyr maid saint catherine nor shalt thou scape the fates to fall his prize albeit so wealthy and so strong thy sight there on aurora's bosom whence thy rise thou home of opulence malacca height the poisoned arrows which thine art supplies the crises thirsting as i see for fight the enamoured melee men the javan braves all of the lusian shall become the slaves she had more stanzas sung in siren's strain lauding her albuquerque's high renown when she recalled the passionate deed the stain on his white fame that o'er the world hath shone the mighty captain whom the fates ordain to view his toils win glory's lasting crown should ever prove him kind and loved compeer of his own men not cruel judge severe in days of hunger and of dire distress sickness bolts arrows thunder lightning glint when the sore seasons and sad sights oppress his soldiers rendering service unstint it seemeth salvage act of wild excess a part inhuman bosom insolent to make last penalty of laws atone for sins our frailty and our love condone abominable incest shall not be his sin nor ruffian rave of virgin pure not in dishonor of adultery but lapse with wanton slave girl vile obscure if urged by jealous sting or modesty or used to cruelty and harshness dower men from his men mad anger curbeth not his fame's white shield shall bear black ugly blot learn alexander that apelles loved and his campaspe gave with glad consent though was the painter not his soldier proved nor in hard urgent siege his force was spent felt cyrus eke panthea deeply moving erasmus by the fire of passion brent though he had ta'en her charge and pledged his oath this honest love should never break his troth but seeing the noble persian slaved and swayed by power of passion son in fine defence he gives slight pardon and thus gained his aid in gravest case the fittest recompense himself perforce the maid of judith made baldwin hight bras de fer but his offence her father charles for troublous times condoned and gave him life the flanders reign to found again the lyre its soul of music sheds and sings the nymph how shall soares fly ere winnowing flags whose terror far o'erspreads the ruddy coasted lands of arabi the abominable town medina dreads as mecca dreads and gida and where lie abasia's ultim shores while barbara fears the fate that floodeth zela mart with tears and eke the noble island taproban whose ancient name ne'er failed to give her note as still she reigns superb and sovereign by boon of fragrant tree bark biting hot toll of her treasure to the lusitan and sign shall pay and proud and high shall float your breezy banners from the lofty tower and all colombo fear your castle tower cicada too far sailing for the shore of erythrus new ways shall open wide to thee great empire who canst vaunt of yore to be candaces and the shibbon's nine Maswa, that hoards in tanks her watery store he shall behold by port archico's side and send explorers to each distant isle till novel wonder all the world beguile succeeds menesish less famed his sword shall be in asia than in afric land he shall chastise high hormus erring horde and twofold tribute claim with conquering hand thou also gama shalt have rich reward for ban of exile went to high command entitled county thou shalt be restored to the fair region this thy feet explored but soon that fatal debt all flesh must pay where from our nature no exception knows while decked with proudest royalties array from life shall reave thee in life's toils and woes other menesish cometh some delay who few of ears but much of prudence shows in rule right happy this in his lot by human story ne'er to be forgot conquer he shall not only malabar destroy panane and culete waste 
hurling the bombers which through hurtled air do horrid havoc on the posing breast but darred with virtues truly singular he deals to sevenfold spirit foes his hest cow ties with incontinence he shall spurn the highest conquest in the years that burn him when his presence shall the stars invite o mascarenhas brave thou shalt succeed and if injurious men shall rob thy right eternal fame i promise for thy meed that every hostile tongue confess thy might and lofty valor fate for thee decreed for more of palm wrath shall thy glory crown than the good fortune due to thy renown where bentham's reign her baleful head appears malacca humbling with her harmful hate in one short day the thousand tyrannous years with bravest bosom shalt avenge and bait in human travels perils without peers a thousand iron reefs and dangers straight stocked and bulwark lances airy sleep all shalt thou break i swear all shalt submit but in's ambition and her lucre lust for ever flaunting bold and brazen face in front of god and justice shall disgust thy heart but do thine honour no disgrace who works vile injury with unreasoning trust and force and footing land by rank and place conquereth nothing the true conqueror he who dares do naked justice fair and free yet to sampaio will i not gain say a noble valour shown by shrewdest blows that shall o'er ocean flash like thunder ray curd with thousand corpses of his foes he shall in back and o'er make fierce essay on malabar till owns in terror throws cuchale beaten with his battered fleet the dreadful ruin of a rout complete nor less of jew the fears and fear are made the dread of shaul daring proudly mend with single glance shall fall till all have fled our hector da silveira's heavy hand our hector portingal of whom tis said that o'er yon ever arm can bay and strand such wrath on guzrat's tis his to wreak as trojan hector wreaked on the greek then shall succeed to fearsome pious powers cunha and hold the helm for many a year building on chalet town the lofty towers while quakes illustrious jew his name to hear but saying to him her sturdy standard lowers yet not some bloodshed for with groan and tear melike seeth his proudest estacade stormed not by firebrand but by sway of blade next comes noronha whose auspicious sway due from the barbarous rume warm and rends due which beleaguered in his warrior way antonio da silveira well defends soon must noronha doom of death obey when branch of thine o gama aden's lands to govern empire and his fiery zeal fierce pallid hue to red sea waves shall deal from thine estevam's hand shall take the rein one raised already to a high degree by his brazilian wars and trophies ta'en from the french pirate homed upon the sea then dubbed emerald of our indian main the month's proud valverty in her panoply his scales the first that open gate to thread by flames and thousand fletchers covered to him cambias king that hottest moor shall yield in wealthy jew the famous fort that he may gain against the grand mogor spite his stupendous power your firm support then shall he wend most valiant conqueror to hem the gentle king in calicut port so let and hindered he and all who hide with him retired in their blood-red diet low shall he lay the city rappelling her monarch forcing with his men to run then well nigh reach the cave clap comerin another wrath of fame by him is won the strongest squadron of the samarin who doubted not to see the world undone he shall destroy with rage of fire and steel beardala's self his martial yoke shall feel then from all in this land the swept the foes the conqueror coming sceptred state to claim finds no resistance where none dare oppose for nations tremble at his terrible name alone shall risk of war the scourging woes bachicala and dree beardala's shame here blood and corpses shall defile the land 
deformed by thunderous gun and fiery brand. This shall be Martin, who the name of Mart bereave and eat the deeds the name that gave, as much esteemed for arms in every part, as wise in stratagem, in counsel grave. Castro succeeds, who Lucius Estandard shall bear for ever in the front to wave. Successor, the succeeded's work who endeth, that buildeth due, this builded due defendeth. The fightful purse, the Bassian, and the rum, who hath revived the name of Rome, their liege, of varied customs, various in costume, fell tribes a thousand flocking to the siege, on earth against the heavens shall vainly fume that guard such handful so their lands abridge. In blood of Portingal's this pain mirai, voweth its crooked and curved moustache to die. Dread basiliscus, lion's fiery flame, fierce catapults, and mines that hidden spring, shall mascarenhas and his barons dare, and to the sure death gladnia shall bring. Till, when all hope is fled and reigns despair, Castro, the saviour, cometh offering his sons' young lives, and wills their names survive, God's sacrifices, a in death to live. One son, Fernando, scion of trees so high, where violentest flames with loudest roar, blow shattered ramparts to the smoky sky, there, stricken down on earth, shall heavenward soar. Alvaro, when mankind dread winter fly, and shift from humid path for arid shore, opens the waters, spite what risks oppose, and fighteth wind and waves to fight the foes. When, see, the father cuts the wavy waste, leaving what resteth of the Lusitane, with Mormon's arm and arts which e'er be best, he offers battle's remedy sovereign. These scale the ramparts and at gateways jest, those cut broad gates through squads with rage and sane, Deeds they shall do so die in memorious glory, song shall not suit, nor history hold the story. He shall once more upon the field appear, a strong, intrepid victor, where his sight, come by as puissant king, shall strike with fear, and hideous hosts of quadrupeds of fright. Nor less shall fail his puissant reign to rear, the heidel camp, when mighty arms shall smite, chastise the bull, mistress of the coast, nor shall spear Ponda's distant inland post. Barons like these, with peers from various parts, all worthy marvel and all mastering fame, raised to rank of mart by martial arts, shall come the pleasures of this isle to claim. Their hands shall wave triumphant estandards, wherever keel edge cutteth ocean stream. Such men, these nymphs, these banquets, a shall find, Honors and glories to high jests assigned. Thus sang the siren, while her sister choir, with their sonorous plaudits, filled the hall, where with the hailed hour of glad desire, crowning the happy marriage festival. However fortune's wheel shall turn its tire, with one harmonious accent chaunted all, renowned people, rest your soul secure, of honor, valor, fame, while worlds endure. When men's corporeal necessity was with the noble viand satisfied, and when in sweet melodious suavity all had their lofty future feats descried, Titus, with grace adorned and gravity, that with a higher pomp and double pride, be crowned the revels of this joyous day, to glad and happy Gama thus gan say. To thee supremest wisdom Gurdon gave, barren, who hast beheld with fleshly eye what things the future hath the power to save from mortal's petty pride and science vain. Follow me firmly, prudent as thou art brave, to yonder craggy break with all thy train. The sheep, and straightway through a long woodland, arduous, gloomy, fear for foot to tread. Nor far they stepped, when on culminant height were stretched a gem enameled mead they stood, Smeric and ruby strewn, so rich the sight, presumed twas paradisial floor they trod. Here swimmeth air a globe, through which the light of purest radiance pierced in such mode that 
as its polished surface clear is clear, so doth its centre and its score appear. What mote its matter be escapes their eyes, yet escapes them not, it holdeth and embrace various orbs, by wand of him all wise, disposed to circle round one central place. Rolling it sinks and then returns to rise, and yet this sinks and it rises, while one face is shown to all and every part, each part begins in fine and ends with heavenly art. Uniform, perfect, and self-poised it be, like the archetype who drew the grand design. Stood Gamma, overwhelmed this globe to see, with joy, and hope its nature to divine. When thus the goddess, hear the epitome, in little volume, to those eyes of thine, I give the general world, so shalt thou view, where goest thou, shalt go, and what shalt do. Here see the mighty world machine appear, ethereal where the fourfold elements blend, made by his deep design, his lofty leer, who lacks beginning and who has no end. He who surrounding holds this shapely sphere, this globe in filled surface, packed and penned, is God. But what God is, the intelligence of mortal genius ne'er shall dare pretends. This primal orb that rolling doth enclose the lesser circles in its lines confined, this sphere whose flood of clearest radiance flows, blinding men's vision and his vulgar mind, is height the empyrean. Here the blessed repose, here perfect spirits, bliss eternal find. Ineffable joys, which he alone may ken, who hath no likeness in the world of men. Only to this imperial sphere belong the gods of truth, for Saturn, Janus, I, Jove and his Juno, are a fabled throng, a mortal figment, a blind fantasy. Only to deck the poet's sprightly song we served, and if more humanity we gained of men, was that his wit hath given our names and natures to the stars of heaven. And eke, because that holy providence, the Jupiter of mythologic strain, by thousand spirits, wise and perfect sense, ruleth all mundane things it doth sustain. Prophetic science doth this truth dispense, a truth so many instances maintain. Sprites that be good, a guide and favor men, the bad his course impede whene'er they can. Here will it picture, leaf with change to play, pleasing and teaching, mixing gay and grave, to give them titles which your olden lay to fabled gods in poet fables gave. For even the angels of the eternal day, as gods enrolled, were in sacred stave, which e'en denies not such exalted name, sometimes to sinner, though with falsest claim. In fine, the God supreme who works his will by second worldly causes, all commands. Return we now the works profound to tell of his divine and venerated hands. Beneath this circle, where all blissful dwell, pure godly sprites, which fixed for ever stands, another rolleth, and so swift, none see its course. This is the primum mobile. And with its rapt and rapid whirl, it drags all lesser spherelets which its womb containeth. By work of this, the sun, who never flags, with alien courses, day and night sustaineth. Neath this swift orb, another orb slow lags. So slow, so hard a curb its ardor reigneth, while Phoebus makes, with ever splendid face, two hundred rounds. This moves a single pace. Lower, this other view, enameled gay, with burnished figures, gleaming, radiant bright, which in it too hold constant ordered way, orbs on their axis, scintillant and pie. Thou seest well, tis dyed with brave array of broad and golden zone, the zodiac height, wherein twelve starry forms of animals shine, that Phoebus mentions limit and define. Behold! In other parts the portraiture, limbed by the stars that sparkling glances shed. Behold the wane, attend the sinosure, and with her fierce warm father, Andromed. See Cassiopeia's beauty lovely pure, 
with turbulent orient's gesture dread behold the swan that doth in song expire the hare and hounds the ship and dulcet lyre beneath this firmamental canopy thou seest saturn's sky that god had old with faster flight doth jove below him fly and mars yet lower bellic planet bold in the fourth seat shines heaven's radiant eye then venus leadeth all her loves enrolled mercury wends with eloquence divine and neath him dian showeth faces trine in all these orbits motion different shall see in these tis swift in those tis slow now fly they farthest from the firmament then sweep they nearest earth that lurks below even so will the sire omnipotent who made the fire and air the wind and snow these lie more inward as thou shalt be shown and earth with ocean for their centre own within this centre in of humankind whose reckless spirits not alone defy sufferings and ills to stable earth confined but in the sea's fierce instability thou shalt see various continents defined by blindly raging tides where parted lie the various realms which various monarchs sway whose varied customs varied laws obey see high hot europe that adores the rude for power and polity were all renowned see Afric grudging every worldly good yon rough in coat and monster haunted ground whose stormy cave till now your search withstood by nature established as her austral bound behold this quarter where the black moors dwell sans loi sans foi whose numbers none can tell behold the benamo tapas puissant reign of salvage negroes nude and noisome race where shall for holy faith be foully slain martyred gonzalo suffering sore disgrace this hidden hemisphere to golden vein gives birth which man must win by sweat of face see from yon lake whence nilus rolls his tide how springs kuwama from the farther side behold those black moors and their huts that stand sun doors each castled in his natal nest they trust of royal justice the command and in the candour of the neighbour's breast behold how furious flies the bestial band like flock of dingy stairs thick packed and pressed to fight sophala's fortress they pretend which dexterous nyaya's arm and wits defend see there the lakes that cradle father nile whose ultimate sources men of old ne'er knew see how the waters gendering cockadrile a bassy land whose sons to christ be true behold how bare of bulwarks novel style they show a better front against the foe see Marrow island willem known to fame which now the wild inhabitants noba name on distant afric hills a son of thee in turkish wars shall win the fame of brave hide don cristovan shall the hero be but flesh from destined death no skill shall save here view the coast where shelter from the sea and glad relief to thee melinda gave note how yon raptus stream whose wide expanse natives call obi entereth in kilmans the cave which ancients aromatic leap behold i clap by moderns guarda fu where opes the red sea mouth so wide and deep the sea whose ruddy bed lends blushing hue this as a bourne was far thrust out to keep asia distinct from afric and a few of the best markets negro seaboards claim are kiko are maswa and suan king view extreme suez here old annals say once to the city high heropolis by some arsino called and in our day she holdeth egypt's fleets and argosies behold the watery deeps where clove his way moses the mighty in past centuries asia beginneth here her huge extent in regions kingdoms empires opulent see sinai mountain with her boast and pride the silver beer of saintly catherine see toro port and jida scant supplied with fountain water soft and crystalline behold the straits which end the southern side of arid eden realms that here confine with tall arzirian range 
nude stone and live when soft sweet rains of heaven ne'er derive see threefold araby covering so much ground where tawny peoples vague or vasty space whence come the rabbites best for battle found light limbed high faddled noble blooded race behold the coast that trends to bind and bound yon other persian strait where sight can trace the headland proud the potent name to own of far city erst to fame well known behold in sign dofar that doth commend for christian altars sweetest incense store but note beginning now on further band of rosalgades ever greedy shore yon hormus kingdom strown along the strand whose fame for riches still shall higher soar when the turk's galleys and his fears are made see castel branco bear his deadly blade behold of asabon the head now hight mosandam by the man who ploughed the main here lies the gulf whose long and lake-like bite parts arabi from fertile persia's plain attend yon barren isle with deaths bedight by the rich pearly shell whose blushes feign aurora tints and view in ocean brine euphrate and tiger in one bed conjoin great persia's noble empire here behold ever on destrier or in camp of war whose sons disdain the copper tube to mould and hands not horny with the scimitar but see yon garum isle the tale unfold of mighty things which time can make or mar for of our musa town yon shore upon the name and glory this her rival won here don felipe de menezes view approved a doughty valiant man at arms who with his portuguese exceeding few shall quell the lara parsi's potent swarms pedro de souza too shall make them rue reversed fortunes warfare's deadliest harms who had his prowess in ampaza shown and took the land by sweep of sword alone but now the narrows and their noted head cape jask carpella called by those of yore quit we the dry terrene scan favored by nature nigger of her normal store while ere carmania twas entitled but view fair indus flood whose waters pour adown his natal heights and in the range of neighbor mountains see the source of gange behold old Cindy's most luxuriant land and of jaqueta shore yon intim bay the monster boar which roaring floods the strand an ebb which flieth with like force away see where cambaya's rich ferocious band boundeth re-entering seas the gulf can bay and thousand cities which i leave untold here hoard their wealth for you to have and hold see runs the celebrate seaboard hindustanian southward till reached its point cape comary erst quarry called where thyland taprobanian tis now ceylon and crowns the fronting sea besides these waves thy people lusitanian who with their doughty arms will follow thee by conquering wars shall lands and towns the bell wherein your sons and sons of sons shall dwell the regions lying twixt these rivers twain thou seest with various tribes are infinite here rule the moslems there the gentles reign whose holy writ the devil did indict see where narzinga's seigneuries contain the saintly relics blessing human sprite thomi's remains the missioner sanctified with thrust his finger in lord jesus side he rose the potent city maliapur named in olden time rich vast and grand her sons their olden idols did adore as still adoreth that iniquitous band in those past ages stood she far from shore when to declare glad tidings o'er the land thome came preaching after he had trod a thousand regions taught to know his god here came he preaching and the while he gave health to the sick revival to the dead when chance one day brought floating o'er the wave a forest tree of size unmeasured the king a palace building leaf would save the way for timber and determine it the mighty bulk of trunk ashore to train by force of engines elephants and men now was that lumber of such vasty size no job it moves however hard they bear when lo the apostle of christ verities 
wastes in the business less of toil and care. His trailing waistcoat to the tree he ties, raises and sun and effort hails it where a sumptuous temple he would rear sublime, a fixed example for all future time. Right well he knew how tis of faith averred, faith moveth mountains, will or nil they move, lending a listening ear to holy word. As Christ had taught him, so twas his to prove. By such a miracle, much the mob was stirred. The Brahmins held it something from above, for, seen his signs and seen his saintly life, they feared the loss of old prerogative. These be the sacerdotes of Gentu creed, that of sore jealousy felt most the pain. They seek ill ways a thousand and take reed, Thome to silence or to gar him slain. The principal who dons the three twined thread by a deed of horror makes the lesson plain. There be no hatred fell, and fear, and cursed, as by false virtue for true virtue nursed. One of his sons he slaughters, and accuses Thome of murder, who was innocent, bringing false witnesses, as there the use is, him to the death they doom incontinent. The saint, assured that his best excuses are his appeals to God omnipotent, prepares to work before the king and court a public marvel of the major sort. He bids be brought the body of the slain, that it may live again, and be a fight to name its slayer, and its word be ta'en as proof of testimony certified. All saw the youth revive, arise again, in name of Jesus Christ the crucified, though may he thanks when raised to life anew, and names his father as the man who slew. So much of marvel did this miracle claim, straightway in holy water bathes the king, followed by many. These kiss Thomas Ham, while those the praisers of his God had sang. Such are the Brahmins, and such furious flame, envy so pricks them with her venom sting, that rousing ruffian rout to wrath condign, a second slaughter plot to the priest's design. One day, when preaching to the folk he stood, they feigned a quarrel mid the mob to rise. Already Christ his holy man endowed with saintly martyrdom that opes the sky. Rained innumerable stones the crowd upon the victim, sacred sacrifice, and last a villain, hastier than the rest, pierced with a cruel spear his godly breast. Wept Genj and Indus, true Tome, thy fate, Wept thee whatever lands thy foot had trod, Yet weep thee more the souls in blissful state Thou lets to don the robes of holy rude. But angels waiting at the paradise gate Met thee with smiling faces, hymning God. We pray thee, pray that still vouchsafe thy Lord Unto thy illusions his good aid afford. And you, ye others, who usurp the name Of God's apostles, missioners like Thome, Say, on your boast of apostolic claim, Why fear not holy faith to preach and pray? If ye be salt, see how yourselves ye your shame, Cleaving to home, where none the prophet play. How shall be salted in dark days as these, Pagans I leave, such hosts of heresies? But now this perilous theme I pass beyond, Gain we again the limned shore in sight. Here, with the city, where our fame is fond, Bends the long bowline of Gangetic bite. Runneth Narzinga rich and potent lawn, Runneth Orissa vaunting tissues bright, And at the bottom of the bay's long line, Illustrious Ganges seeks his home, the brine. Ganges, whose acculents bathe and bathing die, And die in lively faith with all secure, Whatever sins upon their spirits lie, The holy waters lave them sinless pure. See Cavigam, amid the highest high, In Bengal province, crowd of varied store abundant, But behold how placed the post, Where sweeps the shoreline towards the southing coast. A reckon realm behold, behold the seat Of Pegu people by a monster brood, Monsters that gendered meeting most unmeet, Of whelp and woman, in the lonely wood. Here bells of sounding oracle they fit upon their bodies by the craftyhood of subtle queen, who such new custom plan to bait adulterous sin and crime fend. Behold Tavai's city, 
whence begin Siam's dominions, reign of vast extent. Tenasseri, Kedah, of towns the queen, that bear the burden of the hot piment. There, farther forward shall ye make, I ween, Malacca's market grand and opulent, whither each province of the long seaboard shall send of merchantry rich buried hoard. From this peninsula, they say, the sea parted with puissant waves and entering toward Sumatra's noble island, wont to be joined to the main as seen by men of yore. T'was called Kersonesi, and such degree it gained by earth that yielded golden ore. They gave a golden epithet to the ground. Some be who fancy Ophir here was found. But on her lands and throne see Singapore, where the wide sea road shrinks to narrow way, then curves the coast to face the sinister, and lastly trans aurora ward its lay. See Pem, Patani, and in length obscure Siam, that ruleth all with royal sway. Behold Menam, who rolls his lordly tide from source Kiamai called, lake long and wide. Thou seest in spaces of such vast extent nations of thousand names, and yet unnamed, Laos in land and people prepotent, Avas and Brahmas for vast ranges famed. See how in distant wilds and wolds lie pent the self-styled Gians, salvage folk untamed. Men's flesh they eat, their own they paint and sear, branding with burning iron, usage fear. See Mecham River, Fred Cambodia's coast, his name by water captain men explain. In summer only, when he swelleth most, he leaves his bed to flood and feed the plain. As the for Nile he doth his fresh boast, his peoples hold the fond belief and vain that pains and glories after death are sign to brutes and soulless beasts of basest kind. The stream, with gentle, bland repose, shall greet in his embrace the song that swam to land from sad and piteous shipwreck, dripping wet, escaped from the reefs and rocks that fanged the strand, from hunger tortures and the perilous trade, what time went forth the dar unjust command on him whose high sonorous lyre shall claim such want of fortune and such wealth of fame. Here corset, see, the collet champa shore, with woods of odorous wood tis decked and dight, Sikolchi China, still of note obscure, and of Ainam yon undiscovered bight. Here the proud empire famed evermore for widespread lands and wealth and matchless might. Of China runs, and boasts the whole her own, to extort cancer in the frigid zone. Behold yon wondrous and incredible wall, this and that other region built to part, most certain symbol this which shows to all, imperial puissance proud in arm and art these their born princes to the throne ne'er call nor son succeedeth sire in subject heart the properest men as monarch they devise some knight for virtue famed brave and wise perforce hide other vastly lands from thee until what time no land remain unfound but leave thou not those islands of the sea where nature rises to fame's highest round this realm half-shadowed, China's empery, afar reflecting, whither ships are bound, is the Japan, whose virgin silver mine shall shine still sheenier with the law divine. Here sea or oriental seas bespread, infinite island groups, and always strewed, Tidor, Ternate view, whose burning head lanceth the wavy flame and fiery flood. There see the groves the biting clove but shed, bought with the price of Portuguese's blood. Here dwell the golden fowls, whose home is air, and never earthward, save in death, may fare. See Banda's islets, which enameled glow, various painted by the rosy fruits, variegate birds that flit from bough to bough, take tithe and tribute of the greeny nuts. See Borneo's seagirt shore, where ever flow the perfumed liquors, thick and curded gouts, the tears of forest treemen, Camphor cleap, wherefore that island crop of fame shall reap. Timor thence further sendeth forth her store of fragrant saunders, wood medicinal. See Sunda's isle, so stretch her farther shore, that hideth oster regions of a pole. 
the wandering men for inner wilds explore tell of a stream whose marvels never pall for where its lone and single current floweth that wood that in it falls a livestone groweth behold yon land made island of the sea by time whose trembling flame in vapour swelleth see petroil fountain and the prodigy of odorous juice the weeping tree distilleth sweeter than centier shed in araby by sinner's daughter where for a she dwelleth and see how holding all that others hold soft silk she hoardeth and the nugget gold see in salem that peak so stark so gaunt shooting high o'er the clouds or mocking sight the native peoples hold it sacrosanct for the faint stone where printer foot is pie or lone Maldivia's islets grows the plant beneath profoundest seas of sovereign might whose poem of every theriac is confessed by cunning leech of antidotes the best it shalt thou see to form the red sea strait socotra famed for aloe's bitter growth i subject other secret isles to wait your steps where sandy afric's seaboard show and yieldeth floating mass rare odor it but whence it cometh none of mortals knoweth of some lorenzo see yon famous isle which certain travellers madagascar style here distant orients new-found climate see climbs on the world by this your feet bestowed that opened ocean portals paid and free whose vasty plain with doughty hearts you plowed but in the opponent all's a reason be illusion's noble exploit be avowed who being greatly by his king aggrieved shall force a passage fancy ne'er concede see yon huge region whose continuous lines course from callisto to the contrary pole superb shall be by boast of lucent mines whose veins apollo's golden tincture stole castile your ally worthily designs to make its barbarous neck her yoke to thaw in varied regions bide its various tribes with different rites which different use prescribes but here where earth spreads wider ye shall claim realms by the ruddy dyewood made renowned these of the sacred cross shall win the name by your first navy shall that world be found along the seaboard which your arm shall tame shall wend him seeking earth's extremest bound magellan who good sooth by birth shall be a portuguese in all save loyalty and when his courses pass the midway place which from the pole antarctic parts the line he shall behold an all but giant race holding the countries which therewith confine so onwards lie the straits that a shall grace his name which sea with sea through land conjoin a sea and land where horrid oster bideth and neath his frozen wings their measure hideth thus far o portingals to you was given the feats of future ages now to know how o'er those oceans which your kills have riven great heart barons grandest deeds shall do and hence since all with mighty toils have striven toils by whose fame your favour a shall grow with your eternal spouses debonair who shall weave glorious crowns for you to wear ye can embark for favouring blows the wind and to your well-loved home the seas be clear thus spake the goddess and the braves inclined from the glad island of sweet love to steer they bear refreshment of the noblest kind they bear the longed for company each his fear the nymph that ever shall in heart abide long as the sunshine warmeth land and tide so fare they cutting through the main serene with favouring breezes that ne'er blew in ire till they had sighted that familiar scene their fatherland and ever fond desire they passed the tagus mouth our stream amin and gave their country and their dread loved sire who will their voyage glory and renown and added lustrous titles to his crown no more my muse no more for now my lyre untuned lies and hoarse my voice of song not that of singing tire i but i tire singing for surd and horny-hearted throng 
favors which poet fancy mostly fire our land gives not i know tis plunged too long in lust of lucre whelmed in rudest folly a vile austere and vulgar melancholy nor can i wherefore by what fate in thine she joys in genial pride in a general taste which strengthen mortal spirit and incline to face all travail with a happy haste wherefore o king thou whom the will divine hath on the kingly throne for purpose placed look that thou be and see the realms of earth so lord of vessels peerless in their worth look how they gladly wend by many a way with raging bulls or rampant lions might self-doomed to sleepless night and foodless day to fire and steel shaft shower and bullet flight to torrid tropics arctics frore and gray the pagans buffet and the moors despite to risks invisible threatening human life to wreck sea monsters and the waves wild strife all risks to serve thy cause they dare affront to thee though distant yield they homage due of every hard command they bear the brunt some answer ever prompt and ever true on single look of favour could they count infernal demons black with hell's own hue with thee they fain encounter and they there unconquered conqueror their king declare favour them always gladden every face with thy fair presence blithe humanity of rigorous rule relieve them deal the grace of milder law that leads to sanctity impart to long experience rank and place on with experience habit honesty to work thy sovereign will thus all shall trow what things befall them whence and when and how all favor thou in duty's different way as in each life the storied talent lies let the religious for thy governance pray and beg a blessing on each high emprise fast they and fetch their flesh for those who stray in vulgar vices and as wind despise ambition ne'er shall holy priest mislead glare of vainglory nor of gain the greed foster the cavaliers with fair esteem that oft their fearless fiery blood have lent to spread not only heaven's law supreme but eke the royal rule preeminent such men who fare to face each fell extreme of climate in thy cause a diligent conquer a double foe with the foam that live and deadlier task with dark dumb danger strive so do my sire that sons of famous lands britons italians germans and the goal ne'er vaunt that might of mortal man commands thy portingals who should command them all take counsel only with experienced hands men who long ears long moons saw rise and fall many for general science fitness show yet the particulars none save experts know elegant formians philosophic store see how the practised hannibal derided when lectured he with wealth of bellic lore and on big words and books himself he prided senor the soldier's discipline is more than man may learn by mother fancy guided not musing dreaming reading what they write to seeing doing fighting teach the fight but i what dare i say rude humble low to thee unknown yes even in thy dreams yet oft from lips of babes and sucklings flow i trow the words of wisdom men esteems right honest studies my career can show with long experience blent as best beseems and genius here presented for thy view gifts that conjoined appertain to few for serving thee an arm to arms addressed for singing thee a soul the muses raise not lacks me save of thee to stand confessed whose duty tis the good to prize and praise if heaven concede me this and if thy breast deign insect worthy of a poet's lace as doth presage my spirit vat assign viewing the pace the human path divine or doing such daring do 
that ne'er me dews shall atlas mountain like thy glances shake or battling on the plains of ampelus morocco's mures and terror than to break my now esteemed and rejoicing muse thy name o'er earth i swear so faint shall make on alexander shall in thee be shown who of achilles envy ne'er shall own end of canto ten rejected stanzas of the lusiads this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by Lini. the lusiads by luis vaes de camões translated by sir richard francis burton rejected stanzas note these stanzas omitted by camões were discovered by manuel de faria e souza and published in his commentaries juan sanchez 1639 the whole are extant in three manuscripts. Number one, the better of the two first, contains only six cantos. Number two, belonging to M. Correia Montenegro, embraces the whole poem. The third manuscript, in the hands of M. Luis Franco, is given by Viscount Jurumenha, volume 6, 419. It has only four rejected stanzas. The first three are those of Fari Souza and the fourth is that of the established text, Canto 179, with a few unimportant changes of words and rhymes. The stanzas number. Manuscript number 1, 48 plus 2 fragments, 49. Manuscript number 2, Correia Montenegros, 26. Manuscript number 3, Luis Francos, 4. Total, 79. I will not here enter into the consideration why the stanzas were left out. Many of them fully equal those retained in the popular Lusiads, but almost all contained something opposed to public, or rather to priestly, sentiment. A cursory glance shows that not a few want the polish and finish which distinguish the poem. I have purposely followed suit for the sake of contrast and fidelity. Jurumenha's original text is printed in verso, that the reader may judge how literal is my version, which, for additional security, was submitted to Mr. J. J. Auberton, the translator of the Lusiads. The Rejected Stanzas, Manuscript No. 1, Canto 1, Stanza 77, Modified. Isto dizendo, irado e quase insano, sobre a tebana parte descendeu, onde vestindo a forma e gesto humano, para onde o sol nasce e se moveu. Já atravessa mar Mediterrâneo, já de Cleópatra o reino discorreu, já deixa a mão direita os garamantes e os desertos de Líbia circunstantes. He spake in fury wood, like white insane, and straight alighted on the Theban way, where mortal jest and human vesture tain, he bore where newborn Phoebus bears the day. Now spends his flight the Mediterranean main, now spurns the bounds of Cleopatra's sway, now leaves to the right the Garamantes land, and circumjacent sheets of Libyan sand. 2. Jamerui deixa atrás, e a terra ardente, que o septem flu rio vai regando, onde reina o mui santo presidente, os preceitos de Cristo amoestando. Já passa a terra de águas carecente, que estão as alagoas sustentando, donde seu nascimento tem o nilo, que gera o monstruoso crocodilo. Now leaves he merry mid the fiery downs, fed by the waters of the seven flood river, realms which the high and holy president owns, of Christ his doctrine old and true believer. He passes drowsy land whose people wounds, lacking the lakes that roll their waters ever, the very birthplace of the secret Nile, who breeds the monstrous brood of crocodile. 3. Daqui ao Cabo Praço vai direito, e entrando em Moçambique, nesse instante, se faz na forma mouro contrafeito a um dos mais honrados semelhante. E como a seu regente fosse aceito, entrando um pouco triste no semblante, desta sorte o tebano lhe falava, apartando-o dos outros com que estava. 
hence to the present headland fast he flies and making mozambique in briefest space becomes the counterfeit in moorman guise of one that held high honourable place and as the regent much this moor did prize entering with somewhat sad and charged face began the theban thus his plaint to make removing others who sat near the sheik canto one after stanza eighty e para que des crédito ao que falo que este capitão falso está ordenando sabe que quando foste a visitá-lo ouvi dous neste caso estar falando no que digo não faças intervalo que eu te digo sem falta como quando os podes destruir que é bem olhado que quem quer enganar fica enganado and eke the credit these my words befall showing what plotteth yon false capitain no when thou wendedst on thy guest to call i heard this case debated twixt a twain and what i tell thee make no interval and i will truly tell thee how when where thou canst destroy them for i leave believe we should deceive him who would us deceive canto three after stanza ten entre este mar e as águas onde vem correndo largo tanais de contínuo os sármatas estão que se mantêm bebendo roxo sangue leite e quino aqui vivem os mícios que também têm parte de ásia povo baixo e indino e os hábios que mulheres não recebem e muitos mais que o boristênis bebem between this ocean and the waters shed to feed large tanais flowing ceaseless flood dwell the sarmati races who are fed on mere milk diet mixed with purpling blood here live the mysian peoples that o'er spread a part of asia low and glorious brood abii who banish women and with these a host of tribes that drink borysthenes canto three for stanza twenty nine mas a iniqua mãe seguindo em tudo do peito feminil a condição tomava por marido a dom bermudo e a dom bermudo a tomam seu irmão vede um pecado grave bruto e rudo de outro nascido ó grande admiração que o marido deixado vem a ter quem tem por enteada e por mulher but his ill mother following whither led her woman's bosom ready a to range took dom bermudo to her marriage bed and dom bermudo's brother takes in change see the foul sinful bestial action bred by crime begetting crime strange mighty strange that left her husband she remains for heir his married sister and his married fair canto four after stanza two translated in the milieu jubé edition of eighteen sixty two sempre foram bastardos valerosos por letras ou por armas ou por tudo foram -o os mais dos deuses mentirosos que celebrou o antigo povo rudo mercúrio e o douto apolo são famosos per ciência diversa e longo estudo outros são só por armas soberanos hércules e lieu ambos tebanos the meed of valor bastards a have claimed by arts or arms or haply both conjoin it such were of fabled gods the most infamed to whom rude entians highest rank assigned hermes and docked apollo still are named for varied science with long art combined others by arms alone prevail so reigned bacchus and hercules that theban twain two bastardos são também homero e orfeu dois a quem tantos versos ilustraram e os dois de quem o império procedeu que troia e roma em itália edificaram pois se é certo que a fama já escreveu se muitos a filipo nomearam por pai do macedônico mancebo outros lhe dão o um manho nectanebo homer and orpheus eke of birth were base the pair by poetry raised to such degree and they the sires of that imperial race who founded troy and rome for italy nay on in written legend trust we place though many philip may the father be of macedonia's youth 
not few would prove great nectanibus filched his mother's love three assim o filho de pedro justiçoso sendo o governador alevantado do reino foi nas armas tão ditoso que bem pode igualar qualquer passado porque vendo-se o reino receoso de ser do castelhano sujugado aos seus o medo tira que os alcança aos outros a falsífica esperança thus justiciaries pedro's bastard son being exalted o'er the realm to sway by justice of arms such goods of fortune won that equalled every grade of bygone day he when his kingdom feared to be undone and prostrate lie the proud castilian spray baiteth the terror his own legis tries and in all others esprins falsifies canto four after stanza eleven omitted because catalunya and aragon did not then belong to castile nem no reino ficou de tarragona quem não siga de marte o duro ofício nem na cidade nobre que se abona com ser dos cipiões claro edifício também a celebrada barcelona mandou soldados destros no exercício todos estes a junta o castelhano contra o pequeno reino lusitano remained none in realm of tarragon who shirked to mel in mavers dower and prize none in the noble city whose renown upon her founder scipio's name relies and last not least the far-famed barcelon sent warm and tried in warlike exercise all these strong powers united haughty spain against our little lusitanian reign canto four after stanza thirteen ó oh, inimigos maus da natureza que injuriais a própria geração degenerantes baixos que fraqueza de esforço de saber e de razão vos fez que a clara estirpe que se preza de leal fido e limpo coração ofendais dessa sorte mas respeito que este dos grandes é o menor defeito o foes unnatural nature so much bred race of thy race's name disgrace that art the generates caitiffs say what feeble dread sun wisdom reason all men's better part have made a gallant people born and bred loyal and brave with clean and candid heart offend in such base guise but i suspect amid the great this be the least defect canto four in lie of stanza twenty one qual o mancebo claro no romano senado os grandes medos a quebranta do grão cartaginês que soberanos cutelos lhe tinha na garganta quando ganhando o nome de africano a resistir lhe foi com fúria tanta que a pátria duvidosa libertou que fábio invejoso não cuidou e as the noble youth of roman strain strengthened the senate fain in fear to fly the carthaginian who all sovereign his wetted blade to shrinking throats brought nigh when worthily winning surname african his furious force so did their force defy his doubtful country free as air he made when jealous fabius still his reed delayed Canto IV, after Sansa twenty seven. Já a fresca filha de Titão trazia o sempre memorando dia, quando as vésperas se cantam de Maria, que este mês honra, o nome seu tomando. Para a batalha estava já este dia determinado. Logo, embranqueando a alva no céu, os reis se aparelhavam, e as gentes com palavras animavam. Now Titan's daughter, fresh and rosy, came bringing that memorable deathless day when vespers chaunted are in mary's name honoring the holy month whose name is may this day for battle having fittest claim was chosen now as pale the morning gray bleaching the skies both kings unsheathed their swords their hosts unheartening with hearty words canto four after stanza thirty three e vós imperadores que mandastes Tanta parte do mundo, sempre usados a resistir os ásperos contrastes de traidores cruéis e alevantados, não vos queixeis, que agora se atentastes, um dos mais claros reis e mais amados vê contra si, contra seu reino, e lei, seus vassalos por outro estranho rei. 
and emperors, you that held and had command, or so much earth, a ready to resist, an asperous conflict and the wrong withstand, of cruel traitors raising, treason's crest, complain ye not, nay, well this chance attend, one of the noblest kings, and love the best, seize against his law, his crown, his self, his all, Vavasors rise to sue a stranger's thrall. Canto four, after stanza thirty-five. These Homeric stanzas on the deaths of Portuguese knights took away interest from the central figure, the king. Passaram a Giraldo com as entranhas o grosso e forte escudo que tomara a Pérez que matou, que o seu de estranhas cutiladas desfeito já deixara. Morrem Pedro e Duarte, que façanhas nos brijos tinham feito, a quem criara Bragança, ambos mancebos, ambos fortes, companheiros nas vidas e nas mortes. Pierced Giraldo's vitals through and through, and eke the huge thick targe he snatched away from Paris, whom he killed, his own with hue and strangest hack of cutlass useless lay. Dies Pedro, and Duarte dies, in lieu of death amid the bridges. Born were they, both in Braganza, brave in youthful pride. Together lived they, fought they, fell they, died. 2. Morrem Lopo e Vicente de Lisboa, que estavam conjurados a acabarem, ou a ganharem ambos a coroa, de quantos nesta guerra se afamarem. Por cima do cavalo Afonso voa, que cinco castelhanos, por vingarem a morte de outros cinco que matara, o vão privar a si da vida cara. Lopo and Vincent de Lisboa bleed, sworn in the common cause to meet their fate, or both the crown to gain and victories meet, to snatch from all whom most and fame this bait. Afonso flieth from his battle steed, for five Castilians who in ambush wait, to venge five comrades slain in earlier strife, packing around him pluck his precious life. 3. De três lanças passado Hilário cai, mas primeiro vingado a sua tinha. Não lhe pesa porque a alma se lhe sai, mas porque a linda Antônia nele vinha. O fugitivo espírito se lhe vai, e nele o pensamento que o sustinha, e saindo da dama quem servia, o nome lhe cortou na boca fria. Down falls Hilário, drilled by spearheads three, but first he took the vengeance of his spear. He mourneth not because his pride goes free, but for that comes in it Antonia fair. Flitteth the fugitive spirit fast and flee, with it the thought sustaining all to there. And as life fled the service of his dame, fell from his clay-cold lips her broken name. Canto IV, in Lie of Stanza 39 Favorecem os seus com grandes gritas o sucesso do tiro. E ele logo toma outra, que jaziam infinitas dos que as vidas perderam neste jogo. Correm, restando-a forte, e dar-te em cita a brava guerra os seus, que ardendo em fogo, vão ferindo os cavalos de esporadas e os duros inimigos de lançadas. His followers favor with a piercing cry this goodly lunge of lance, nor is he slow to snatch another, for in numerous lie the weapons lost by battle's losing throw. He runs with couched spear. His bravery urgeth his braves who brent with martial low into the coarsest flanks keen rowels thrust and lands the foeman level with the dust. Canto four, after stanza forty, the corresponding deaths of Spanish knights. Velasquez morre Sanchez de Toledo, um grande caçador, outro letrado. Também perece Galbes, que sem medo Sempre dos companheiros foi chamado. Montanches, Oropesa, Mondonhedo, Qualquer destro nas armas esforçado, Todos, permãos de Antônio, moço forte, Destro mais que eles, pois os trouxe a morte. Velasquez dies with Sanchez de Toledo, A mighty hunter this, and that a clerk. Galvez eke perisheth, surnamed, sem medo, For thus his comrades called for countermark. Montanche, Soropesa, Mondonhedo, albeit skilled in arms, in sinews stark, fell by Antonio's hand, stout youth and brave, whose lance more dexterous drave them to the grave. 2. 
guevara roncador que o rosto untava, mãos e barba do sangue que corria, por dizer que dos muitos que matava, saltava nele o sangue e o tingia, quando destes abusos se jactava, de través lhe dá Pedro que o ouvia, tal golpe com que ali lhe foi partida, do corpo a van cabeça e a torpe vida. Braggart Guevara, who his front had dyed, and hands and beard with blood that tinged the plain, that he might bluster how the gory tide had spurted painting him with honored stain, him, bellowing such bravados in his pride, Pedro, who heard the vauntings loud and vain, fell with such side-stroke that his empty head flew from his body, and his base life fled. 3. Pelo ar a cabeça lhe voou, ainda contando a história de seus feitos. Pedro, do negro sangue que esguichou, foi todo salpicado, rosto e peitos. Justa vingança do que em vida usou. Logo com ele, ao ocaso, vão direitos. Carrilho, João da Lorca, com Robledo, porque os outros fugindo vão de medo. Flew high in airy space his feckless paid, while still a boasting of some blatant jest. Pedro, besprinkled by the squirt and jet, feels black blood trickling down his beard and breast, wherewith the malapert pays his vengeance debt. Carrillo's son exceteth in its west, Juan de Lorca and Robledo follow, while the other braves in flight their boasts must swallow. 4. Salazar, grão tafu e o mais antigo, confião que Sevilha então sustinha, a quem a falsa amiga que consigo trouxe, de noite só fugido tinha, Fugiu-lhe a amiga, enfim, para outro amigo, porque viu que o dinheiro com que vinha perdeu todo de um resto, e não perdera se uma carta de espadas lhe viera. Salazar, famous parasite, and the head pender who made Sevilla town and fame, whom his false lemon had at night tide fled, though to the campment she had brought her shame, leave wood with other friend this fair friend bed, for that the ducats wherewithal he came, were lost upon a cast, nor were they lost, had but a hand of spades came uppermost. 5. O desprezo da amiga o desatina, e o mundo todo, a terra e o céu vagante, blasfemando ameaça, e determina de vingar-se em qualquer que achar diante. Encontra com Gaspar, que Catarina ama em extremo, e leva do montante, que no ar fere fogo, e certo cria, que um monte da pancada fenderia. His she friends treasure gars him wits to tine, and threaten universe, earth, and vaguing skies, blaspheming, and resolve with rage and dine all who dare cross his valor to chastise. Encountering Gasper, who his Catherine loves as his life, the broadsword fast he plies, till air far smitten makes him fain believe such stroke of mighty blade a hill could cleave. 6. Bem cuida de cortá-lo em dois pedaços. Porém, Gaspar, vendo o montante erguido, serra com ele e leva-o nos braços, cometimento destro e atrevido. Braceia o castelhano e de ameaços se serve ainda, e estando já vencido, o português forçoso em breve mora lhe leva a arma das mãos e salta fora. Fondly he hopes the foe to hew in twain, but Gaspar, sighting overhead the blade, runs in, and catcheth him with gripping strain. T'was a fair feat of skill and hardy head. The Spaniard clippeth, yet doth not restrain his boastful threatening, although conquered. The forceful Portingal, with short delay, unarms his hands and leaps from out his way. 7. E porque ele não lhe use a própria manha, que este lhe usara já, de ponta o fere. Nos peitos o montante, enfim, lhe banha, porque de outra vingança desespere. Fugiu-lhe a alma indigna, e na montanha tartária ainda blasfema. Ali refere, de mais não assoltar a inimiga ingrata, que os açoutes de alecto pena e mata. Then, lest his foeman use such crafty mode, himself had used, he deals to cattle thrust, and find the broadsword in his bosom blood, he bays, that not to vengeance mode he trust. Flieth the furious ghost, and in the wood Tartarian still blasphemes, relates his lust for vengeance, who no more can scourge his queen, while him Electo scourgeth long and keen. 8. 
e do metal de espadas aos danados, desmales e blasfêmias sem medidos, que já por não lhe entrar perde os cruzados, e agora por entrar lhe perde a vida, por pena quer Plutão de seus pecados, que se lhe mostre a amiga já fugida, em brincos de ouro e beijos em levada, remete ele para eles, e acha nada. The spader's metal to the damned host, ill names he calleth heaping curses dread, which, when it entered not, his ducats lost, and lost his life when it had entered. Pluto, to guard him pays in scot and cost, shows him the traitorous lady friend who fled. Joyed by his rival, raining greedy kisses, he starts to strike them with the shades he misses. Canto 4, after stanza 44. Ó oh, pensamento vão do peito humano, agora neste cego error caíste, agora este fermoso e ledo engano da sanguinosa e fera guerra viste, agora que com sangue e próprio dano a dura experiência acerba e triste tu tem mostrado, e agora que o provaste, os conselhos darás que não tomaste. O oh, vain reflections guiling human sense, How could this darkling error seal your sight? How have ye hugged this gay and glad pretense that lures to sanguine hate and baneful fight? And now, of bloodshed dark experience, the sore dread trial of the deadly blight is shown to thee. And now, when known thy lot, thou shalt give counsel which thou tookest not. 2. Dos corpos dos inimigos cavaleiros, do mato os animais se apacentaram. As fontes, de mais perto dos primeiros, dias sangue com água destilaram. Os pastores do campo e os monteiros da vizinha montanha não gostaram. As aves de rapina em mais de um ano por terem o sabor do corpo humano. The corpses of the cavaliers are foam, fed the foul creatures of the field and wood. The nearest fountains till some days were gone distilled their crystal black with human blood. The meadow shepherds and the swains who won upon the mountain loathed the fulsome food, the feral bird, which for a year and more smacked of the gorged flesh and human gore. Canto 4, stanza 49, Guaria Lectio. Ponderando o tamanho atrevimento, disse a Netuno então proteu o profeta. Temo que desta gente, gente venha, que de teus reinos o grão cetro tenha. Pondering such mighty deeds of daring do, prophetic Proteus thus to Neptune cried, I fear shall spring such braves from braves like these, who the great scepter of thy reign shall seize. 2. Já toma forte porta inexpugnável, que o conde desleal primeiro abriu, por se vingar do amor inevitável que a fortuna em Rodrigo permitiu. Mas não foi esta a causa detestável que a populosa Espanha destruiu. Juízo de Deus foi por causa incerta. Acaso mostra per Rodrigo aberta. He gaineth now the port inespunable, whereof the traitor count first oped the gate, in blood to wash the love inevitable, fired in Rodrigo's heart by hand of fate. Yet this was not the cause abominable, but wasted populous Hispanian state, God, for some hidden judgment, gave command, the house be opened by Rodrigo's hand. 3. Já agora, ó nobre Espanha, estás segura, se segurar-te podem, cavaleiros, de outra perda como esta, iníqua e dura, pois que tens portugueses por porteiros. Assim, se deu a próspera ventura do rei Joane à terra, que aos fronteiros espanhóis tanto tempo molestara, e vencida ficou, mais nobre e clara. But now thou livest safe, O noble Spain, If knightly force can save its land of all. From other loss like this, From shame and stain, Who for a porter has the porting gall. This happy fortune waited on the reign Of King Joan, Who the bounding wall Of Spanish long molested many years, And conquered a higher crest of rears. Canto 4, Stanza 61, Guaria Lectio. Da próspera cidade de Veneza, Veneza, a qual os povos que escaparam do gótico furor e da crueza de Átila edificaram pobremente, e foi rica depois e preeminente. Of Venice, splendid in prosperity, 
Venice, where too the fisher peoples fled from Gothic fury and the cruelty of Adela, who built the pauper town, now raised to rich estate and high renown. Canto IV, after stanza 66. Não foi sem justa e grande causa eleito para o sublime trono e governança, este, de cujo ilustre e forte peito, depende uma grandíssima esperança. Pois não havendo herdeiro mais direito no reino, e mais por esta confiança, Joane o escolheu, que só o herdasse, não tendo filho herdeiro, que reinasse. Nor chosen was some justest cause and care to fill the lofty throne of governance, this king, whose noble heart and spirit rare pledged and promised highest aspirants. For him, there be no director heir, and urged mostly by such confidence, Joanne chose as heir to reign alone, having no son inheritor to the throne. Canto IV, after stanza 86. A Lili prometemos, sem sossego, nos leva às partes onde Febo nasce, de ou espalhar sua fé no mundo cego, ou o sangue do povo pertinasse. Fizemos para as almas santo emprego de fiel confissão, pura e verace, em que, posto que hereges a reprovam, as almas, como a fênix, se renovam. There did we promise, if his mercy deign, to bear us safe where Phoebus bursts the womb, or to blind worlds we would his faith ordain, were headstrong heathenous to death would doom. All for our soul's eternal health were fain, with pure, veracious shrift our sprites to loom, whereby, though heretics made spar decry, souls, like the renovate phoenix, heavenward fly. 2. Tomamos o divino mantimento, com cuja graça santa tantos dias, sem outro algum terrestre provimento, se sustentaram já Moisés e Elias. Pão, de quem nenhum grande pensamento, nem sutis e profundas fantasias, alcançam o segredo e virtude alta, se do juízo a fé não supre a falta. Then to partake of ghostly meat we went, by whose most gracious boon so many days, some taste of other earthly nutriment, erst were sustained Elias and Moisés. Bread, whose deep secrets ne thought eminent, Ne subtle lore, ne soaring fantasies, Shall ever fathom, ever plumb its smite, Unto dark reason faith deny her light. Canto VI, after stanza seven. Lá na sublime Itália um celebrado Antro secreto está, chamado Averno, Por onde o capitão troiano, ousado, As negras sombras foi do escuro inferno. Por ali há também um desusado caminho Que vai ter ao centro interno do mar, aonde o deus Netuno mora. Por ali foi descendo o baco agora. There, in sublime Italia, yawns a cave, secret and celebrate, a vernus height, where through the Trojan leader, bold and brave, gained inferno's realm of gloomy night. And all's this answer easy at it gave, by road untrod to ocean's middle side, the sea-god Neptune's proper tenement, now thither Bacchus gan the long descent. Canto VI, after stanza 24. A dor do desamor nunca respeita, se tem culpa ou se não tem culpa a parte, porque se a cousa amada vos enjeita, vingança busca só de qualquer arte. Porém, quem outrem ama, que aproveita, trabalhar que vos ame e que se aparte de seu desejo, e que por outro negue, se sempre foge amor de quem o segue, Dolor of fell does love hath no respect, for fault or for unfault on either part. If what thou lovest leave thy love reject, only some sore revenge shall solve the smart. But say, what profit shall thy love expect, when she thou lovest hath bestowed her heart? How shall for others love himself deny, when love delights his followers aid a fly? Canto six after stanza forty. De que serve contar grandes histórias, de capitães, de guerras afamadas, onde a morte tem ásperas vitórias, de vontades alheias sujugadas? Outros farão grandíssimas memórias, de feitos, de batalhas conquistadas. Eu as farei, se for no mundo ouvido, de como só de uns olhos fui vencido. 
what boots recounting feats and jests notorious of celebrate capitains and grand campaigns where vaunting death boasts asperus might victorious or alien will he bendeth as he feigneth let others sing and say the deeds memorious achieved by conquerors on their battle plains let it be mine if worlds will hear to tell how by a pair of eyes mere force i fell Two. Não foi pouco aprazível a Veloso tratar-se esta matéria vigiando, que, com quanto era duro e belicoso, amor o tinha feito manso e brando. Tão concertado vive este enganoso moço com a natureza, que, tratando os corações tão doce e brandamente, não deixa de ser forte quem o sente. No little pleasure to Veloso gave, so fair a subject watch and war to guile, for, as dure warfare made him dour and brave, so gentle love his breast by softening while such is the cunning of this cupid knave so art with nature can he reconcile while mortal hearts with blandness it endoweth lovers with double power his will empowereth three contai disse senhor contai de amores as maravilhas sempre acontecidas que ainda de seus fios cortadores no peito trago abertas as feridas Concederam os mais vigiadores que ali fossem de todos referidas as histórias que já do amor passaram, e assim sua vigia começaram. Recount, quoth he, recount of love, fair sir, and of the wondrous chances love befell. Still his sharp arrows this sad bosom stir, that may not hurt of open wound the spell. With him agreed each watchful mariner, that all and every then and there should tell their tales of love, and how the ventures fared. Thus wise it's watch to keep the crew prepared. 4. Disse então Leonardo, Não espere ninguém que conte fábulas antigas, que quem alheia as lágrimas refere, das próprias vivizento e sem fadigas. Porque depois que amor com os olhos fere, nunca por tão suaves inimigas, como a mim só no mundo tem ferido, pira-mo nem o um nadador de abido. Then quoth Leonardo, Here let no man what, from me to gather fables known of your, who so would quote the tears of alien lot, himself exempted hath no tears in store, sith love with magic islands mortal smote, those dearest enemies mine smote none so sore mid men as me, nor Pyramus, nor him, who from Abida's hellish stream did swim. 5. Fortuna, que no mundo pode tanto, me deitou longe já da pátria minha, onde tão longo tempo vivi, quanto bastou para perder um bem que tinha. Livre vivia então, mas não me espanto, senão que, sendo livre, não sustinha, deixar de ser cativo, que o cuidado, sem porquê tive sempre namorado. Fortune, who vaunteth o'er the world her might, already drave me far from fatherland, where I long time had lived, sufficient quite, to lose a blessing which I held in hand. Yes, free I lived, yet naught astounds my sprite, save that my freedom I could not command. But changed for prison, since mine every thought, would I or nood I, boon of love besought. Canto VI, after stanza 81 Divina guarda, angélica, celeste, que o astrífero polo senhoreias, tu que a todo Israel refúgio deste, Per metade das águas eritreias, se por mores perigosos me trouxeste, que ao Itacense Ulisses ou Enéas, passando os largos términos de Apolo, pelas fúrias de Tétis e de Eulo. Thou, guard divine, who dost with angels dwell, and of the starry pole hast sangery, thou who didst bring thy people Israel through the burst waters of the blushing sea, if from more risks than what Tinius fell, or Ithacan Ulysses, savedst thou me, passing Apollo's largely bounded path through rage of Aeolus and Tethys' wrath. Canto VI, after Sansa 94 Olhai como depois de um grande medo, tão desejado bem logo se alcança, assim também de trás de estado ledo, tristeza está, certíssima mudança. Quem quisesse alcançar este segredo de não se ver nas coisas segurança, Creio, se esquadrinhá-lo bem quisesse, que em vez de saber mais, endoudecesse. 
Look ye, how following fast on fears the spear, we win the wheel that seem beyond our range. Thus ever dogging happy days and care, comes hateful sorrow with her certain change. Whoso would win such lore, such secret bear, how chance shall a security is strange. I wot, his wisdom would no blessing gain, but breed a madness in his brooding brain. 2. Não responda quem disse que a fortuna era em todas as coisas inconstante. Que mandou Deus ao mundo por coluna, deosa que ora se abaixa, ora levante. Opinião das gentes importuna é ter que o homem aos anjos semelhante, por quem já Deus fez tanto, se pusesse, nas mãos do leve caso que o regisse. I have short answer for the wise who say that fickle fortune deals in living lies, that God hath made for pillar of his sway a goddess ranging aid to its fallen rise. Importunate opinion men obey, that men whose nature with the angels vies, for whom his God such goodness wrought is ruled by blindful chances and by luck befooled. 3. Mas quem diz que virtudes ou pecados sobem baixos e abaixam os subidos, que me dirá se os maus vir sublimados? Que me dirá se os bons vir abatidos? Se alguém me diz que nascem destinados, parece razão áspera aos ouvidos. Que se eu nasci obrigado a meu destino, que mais me vá ser santo que malino? Who saith that good or ill be reason why the lowly up, the lofty downward go? What shall he say, miss seeing the low rise high? What shall he say, miss seeing the high fall low? If some should say, we're born predestined, I find it an aspirous reason so to throw. If darkly bound by bond of destiny, what boots a sinner or a saint I be? 4. Viram-se os portugueses em tormenta, que nenhum se lembrava já da vida. Subitamente passa, e lhe apresenta, Vênus, a coisa deles mais querida. Mas o Cabral, que o número acrescenta dos naufrágios na costa desabrida, a vida salva alegre, e logo perto a perde, ou por destino, ou por acerto. Such dreadful storm the Portingals tormented, all were assured life was surely lost. Sudden it passed, and to them presented Venus the guerdon which they yearned for most. Meanwhile Cabral, whose rack and rock distented the list of losses on that portless coast, saves his life gladly, and at once he loses, because what men call chance or destiny chooses. 5. Se havia de perdê-la em breve instante, o salvá-la primeiro que lhe val, fortuna ali se é hábil e prestante, por que não davam bem de trás de um mal? Bendizia o filósofo elegante, Simônides, ficando em um portal, salvo, donde os amigos morrer vira, na sala arruinada que caíra. On he must lose his life in one short hour, to save the span before, what could avail? We ask why fortune's all-prevailing power, upon the hills of ills and not of well. Well said the sage, so faint for elegant lore, Simonides, who from his safe port hail, beheld his travelling friends within the hall, crushed by the fragments of the fallen wall. 6. Ó poder da fortuna tão pesado, que tantos num momento assim mataste, para que maior mal me tens guardado, se deste que é tamanho me guardaste? Bem sabia que o céu está virado, não há dano que o seu furor abaste, nem fez um mal tamanho que não tenha outro muito maior. Que logo venha. O force of fortune grievers, sore to dree, that hast so many in one moment slain, say, for what greater bane hast saved me, whom thou hast saved from this present pain? Certes, the wrath of heaven right well I see. No harm sufficeth for his rage insane, nor ill he worketh, but the will he had, eftsoons of working something worse than bad. 7. We bem sei que não falta quem me desse, razões sutis que o engenho lhe assegura, nem quem segundas causas resolvesse, matérias altas que o juízo apura. Eu lhe fico, que a todos respondesse, mas não o sofre a força da escritura. Respondo só, que a longa experiência enleia muitas vezes a ciência. Right well I wot that many shall be found, with subtle reasons faith to reassure, 
many by second causes shall expound high matters sound sure judgment doth the pure to all i pledge myself i could respond that art of scribe such mighty theme endure i but respond that long experience oft shows your science lacking common sense end of manuscript number one manuscript number two canto eight after stanza thirty two este deu grão princípio a sublimada ilustríssima casa de bragança em estado e grandeza avantajada a quantas o espanhol império alcança vês aquele que vai com forte armada cortando o espério mar e logo alcança o valeroso intento que pretende e a vila de asamor combate e rende this the foundation stone sublimely laid of the braganza house illustrious train which in estate and grandeur all outweighed whatever vaunts the high hispanian reign seest thou him who with the stout are made, cutteth the Sperian sea forthwith to gain his brave objective, whence this stout pretender as a more town to fight and guard surrender. 2. É o duque Dom Gemes, derivado do tronco antigo e sucessor famoso, que o grande feito empreende, e acabado, a Portugal dá volta vitorioso, deixando desta vez tão admirado a todo o mundo, e o mouro tão medroso, que ainda até agora nunca há despedido o grão temor em tonses concebido. Tis Ducal Gemis, erting from his sires, of old nobility a name memorious, who does this mighty deed, and high desires fulfilled, to Portugal returns victorious. This time of valor which the world admires, leaveth the moorman in such fear inglorious, who to the present is no wise relieved, of the cold burthen in the past conceived. 3. E se o famoso duque mais avante não passa com a católica conquista nos muros de Marrocos e Trudante e outros lugares mil à escala vista, não é por falta de ânimo constante, nem de esforço e vontade pronta e lisa, mas foi por não passar o limitado término per seu rei assinalado. And if the famous duke forbore as want Catholic conquests farther still to bear, unto Morocco's muirs and Teruden, and other thousand thorps the haven near, deem not his constant soul of spirit scan, or wanting energy were slow to dare. T'was that his loyalty to cross declined the certain limits which his king assigned. Canto eight, after stanza thirty six. Achou-se nesta desigual batalha um dos nossos de amigos rodeado, mas ele de valor mais que de malha e militar esforço acompanhado, do primeiro o cavalo mata e talha o colo a seu senhor com desusado golpe de espada e passo a passo andando os torvados contrários vai deixando. In such unfairest odds and chance of fray one of our soldiers was begirt by foes, but he by valor more than male, makes way, and of true warrior heart fiercer and shows, slaying the near charger with his saber sway, its rider's head upon the plain he throws, brave swarder feet, and pace by pace he leaveth, airier the foeman whom such exploit grieveth. Canto 10, after stanza 72. Verá-se, enfim, toda a Índia conjurada, com bélico aparelho, Várias gentes, Chaú, Gol e Malaca ter cercada, em um tempo lugares diferentes. Mas vê, como Chaú quase tomada, o mar com suas ondas eminentes, vai socorrer a gente portuguesa, que só de Deus espera já defesa. Shalt see, in fine, conspire all India, dressed to bellic apparatus, people's rush, Chaú, Malaca, Goa town to invest, at once such different sights to seize and crush. But see, now Chell city sorely pressed, the seas with eminent billows flies to brush. Castro, in haste his portingals to save, when only God in mercy's aid they crave. 2. Vês qual o rei gentio, pressuroso, arde, cerca, discorre, e anda listo, incitando o exército espantoso a destruir um esquadrão de Cristo, mas nota o ponto de honra generoso, 
em cerco nem batalha nunca visto, os soldados, fugindo do seguro, passar-se ao posto perigoso e duro. Se thou yon pain him king, so fain a fight, burn, overrun, beleaguer, firm persist, in throwing forces which the land of fright, against a little squad that loveth Christ. But bear that generous pandanore in sight, the siege in the battle e'er before hath wist. See how the soldiery flying posts secure, pass to the post of peril dire and dure. 3. Ali o prudentíssimo Ataíde, confortado da ajuda soberana, onde a necessidade e tempo o pide, socorrerá com força mais que humana, até que com seus danos se despide do cru intento a gente viu profana, que em batalhas e encontros mil vencidos virão a pedir paz arrependidos. There shall Ataíde, most for prudence known, strong in the ghostly comfort of the Lord, for time and need demand such force be shown, with more than human valor aid afford, until its salvage object shall disown, with grievous losses yon vile pagan horde, who crushed in thousand cruel fights shall rue the war, and hurry for the truce to sue. 4. Enquanto isto passar cá na lumiosa costa de Ásia e América sombria, não menos lá na Europa belicosa e nas terras da inculta barbaria, mostrará a gente Elísia valerosa, seu preço de temor tornando fria a zona ardente, em ver que uma conquista lhe não paz que das outras três desista. While here so happeth on the coast that glows of Asia and America somber cold, there not the less in Europe bellicose, and barbary wild uncultivated world shall show thy race elysian valorous its worth and with a freezing fear enfold the seeding zone that sees one conquest one pass to three other and ne'er pause till done five verão o valentíssimo barriga adaiu desafim grande afamado sem ter por armas quem lhe contradiga correr de mauritânia serra e prado mas vê como a infiel gente inimiga o prende por um caso desastrado, e com ele outra gente leva presa, que em tal caso não pode ter defesa. Barriga, brave of braves, they here shall sight, guide of the fem, in war of prime account, who finds no man at arms to foil his might, or run the Mauritanian plain and mount. But see how the infidels, by luck of fight, and doom disastrous, in the very brunt Make him and his Bologna's battle prize, for in such chances valor hopeless lies. 6. Mas passado este trance perigoso, olha onde preso vai, como arrebata a lança de um dos mouros, e furioso, com ela seu senhor derriba e mata, e revolvendo o braço poderoso, os seus livra e os inimigos desbarata, e assim todos, alegres e triunfantes, se tornam donde foram presos antes. But past the perils of this imminent chance, see how he snatcheth while to durance led from grasp of Moorish foe the beamy lance, and lays with single lunge its lancer dead. Then with strong arm the weapon swung askance, he saves his friends the while his foes have fled. Thus all triumphant wend his men their way, whither their lot was sad captivity. 7. Ei Lucá, por engano, outra vez preso, está na escura e viu estrebaria, carregado de ferros, de tal peso, que de um lugar mover-se não podia. Vê-lo, de generoso fogo aceso, que o pão ensanguentado sacudia, com que ao soberbo mouro a morte dera, que em sua honrada barba a mão pusera. Lo, here is he by sneer once more beset, and in the darkness of vile stable lane, loaded with iron fetters of such weight, from off the floor he mote not rise again. But see the heart with generous fire I raid, tear up the stake that showed a bloody stain, and brain the haughty moor who had not feared, foul hand to fasten on his honored beard. 8. Mas vê como os infidos agarenos, permandado lhe dão do rei descrido, tanto assolte por isto, que em pequenos lhe fazem sobre as costas o vestido, sem que ao forte varão vozes, nem menos, ouvissem dar um íntimo gemido. Já vai a Portugal despedaçado, 
o vestido a pedir ser resgatado. Yet further see yon faithless Hagarine, by the commandment of his infidel king, visit the daring deed with scourge so keen, that strips from ribs his robes with stripes that sting. Yet the brave baron scorns one word, nor e'en an ah, a murmur, may his tortures ring. To Portugal the ragged vesture goes, wherewith to raise a ransom for the foes. 9. Olha cabo de aguera que tomado, per culpa dos soldados de socorro, vês o grande carvalho ali cercado de inimigos como touro em duro corro? De trinta mouros mortos rodeado, revolvendo o montante diz, pois morro, celebrem mortos minha morte escura, e façam-me de mortos sepultura. Behold yon agar headland tain, and lost by fault of tardy succoring soldiery. And seest thou great carvalho, mid the host, hostile, like baited bull the ring or fly? Hear him, mid thirty moorish corpses boast, whirling his broadsword, crying, Since I die, let dead atone for this mine obscure doom. These carrion deadlings for my fittest tomb. 10. Ambas pernas quebradas, que passando um tiro, espedaçado lhe as havia, dos de olhos e braços se ajudando, com nunca visto esforço e valentia, em torno pelo campo retirando, vai a garena, dura companhia, que com dardos e setas que tiravam, de longe dar-lhe a morte procuravam. See how when both his legs a passing ball, in pieces dashed and shanks from trunk had mown, on arms and knees he doth his best to crawl, and fight with force and valor never known. Rounded about the field he vanish all, haggers hard children who no pity own, and with their shafts and javelins far they deal, the death they dare not by a nearer steal. Canto 10, after stanza 73. Com tais obras e feitos excelentes, de valor nunca visto nem cuidado, alcançareis aquelas preeminentes excelências que o céu tem reservado para vós outros, entre quantas gentes o sol aquenta e cerca o humor salgado, que em pouco se acham poucas repartidas e em nenhuma nação juntas e unidas. With similar labors, just so great, so new of valor never viewed nor reached by thought, to honor shall you rise, so high, so true, to excellences heaven's will hath wrought, mid worlds of men, for you, and only you. While Phoebus warms what salty billows mote, rare boons be these which rarely doled we find to men, and only in you men conjoined. 2. Religião, a primeira, sublimada, de pio e santo zelo revestida, ao culto divinal somente dada, em seu serviço e obras embebida, nesta, a gente no Elísio campo nada, se mostrou sempre tal em morte e vida, que pode pretender a primazia da ilustre religiosa monarquia. Religion first, the truth sublime revealed, in earthly garb of pious holy zeal, fain to divine obedience self to yield, and all imbibed with its works of weal. Thus man fares swimming to the Elysian field, and thus in life and death shall ever deal mortals, strain to win the princely prize which high religious monarchy affies. 3. Lealdada é segunda que engrandece sobre todas o nobre peito humano, com a qual semelhante ser parece ao coro celestial e soberano. Nesta, per todo o mundo se conhece, por tão ilustre o povo lusitano, que jamais a seu Deus e rei jurado, a fé devida e pública há negado. Loyalty second, that makes great and grand above all others hearts of noble strain, whereby a certain likeness mortals fend to choirs immortal in the heavenly reign. For this be known o'er farthest sea and land the passing merits of the Lusitan, ne'er to his maker nor sworn king forsworn, nor hold such public faith to public scorn. 4. Fortaleza vem logo que os autores tanto do antigo luso magnificam, que os vossos portugueses com maiores obras ser verdadeira certificam, dando matéria a novos escritores, com feitos que em memória eterna ficam, 
e vencendo do mundo os mais subidos, sem nunca de mais poucos ser vencidos. Valor next cometh, which of your did greet, in olden luces, men who sang and wrote, and which your portingals with greater feet certify veridic without in doubt, affording novel theme to modern writ with their high exploits of memorious note, and vanquishing o'er the world the most renowned, by fewer vanquished they shall ne'er be found. 5. Conquista será a quarta, que no império português só reside com possança, pois no sublime e no ínfimo hemisfério as quatro partes só do mundo alcança, e as quatro nações delas, por mistério, com que conquista e tem certa esperança, que cristãos, mouros, turcos e gentios juntarão numa lei seus senhorios. Conquest shall prove the fourth, which in the power of only Portugal full force resideth, since in the higher hemisphere and lower o'er earth's four quarters she alone abideth. The four great nations only serve to show her what high mysterious hope her conquests guideth, that Christian, Moorman, Turk, and Gentile all join it in single law shall feel her thrall. 6. Descobrimento é quinta que, bem certo, a gente lusitana só se deve, pois tendo norte a sur já descoberto, adonde o dia é grande e adonde é breve, e por caminho desusado, incerto, de ponente a levante ainda se atreve, cercar o mundo em torno per direito, feito depois, nem antes, nunca feito. Discovery comes the fifth, which, of a truth, to none save Lucy's children doth belong, who have explored all from north to south, where suns be short-lived and where days be long, now by uncertain ways, unused, uncouth, from ponent levantward in daring strong, she wends to circle earth by shortest tract, a feat which never was till now a fact. 7. Deixo de referir a piedade do peito português e cortesia, temperança, fé, zelo e caridade com outras muitas que contar podia, pois a segundo ponto da verdade e regras da moral filosofia não pode conservar-se uma virtude sem que das outras todas se arme e ajude. I pass in silence o'er the piety and courteous ways that mark the Lucian breast, temperance, holy faith, zeal, charity, with other gifts as easy to attest, for tis a notable point of verity, moral philosophy's own rule and hest, no single virtue e'er hath man arrayed, when all the others do not arm and aid. 8. Mas destas, como base e fundamento, daquelas cinco insignes excelências, em que elas têm seu natural assento, e de quem tomam suas dependências, não quero aqui tratar, que meu intento não é descer a todas minudências, que gerais são no mundo a muita gente, senão das que em vós se acham tão somente. But these, the first foundation and the base, of those renowned five transcendencies, whereon they rest and rise by nature's grace, and whence they borrow fair dependencies, here I neglect, for stoop I not to trace that meaner matter which the tendance is of human nature in the general view, only I tell what dwells in only you. 9. Mas não será de todo limpo e puro o curso desigual de vossa história, Tal é a condição do estado escuro da humana vida, frágil, transitória. Que mortes, perdições, trabalho duro, aguarão grandemente vossa glória. Mas não poderá algum sucesso ou fado derribar-vos deste alto e honroso estado. Nathless expect not to run clear and pure the course uneven of your race's story, such the condition of our state obscure, of human lifetide, fragile, transitory. Death and destruction, travail sore and dure, shall mingle water in your wine of glory. Yet ne'er shall force of fortune, nor of fate, the greater gifts, debase your high estate. 10. Tempo virá, que entrambos hemisférios, descobertos per vós e conquistados, e com batalhas, mortes, cativeiros, os vários povos deles sujeitados, de Espanha os dois grandíssimos impérios 
serão num senhorio só juntados, ficando por metrópole, senhora, a cidade que cá vos manda agora. Shall dawn the day or either hemisphere, by you explored and conquered in fight, where battle, slaughter, prison doom strike fear in all the people subject to your might? The twain of mightiest empires, which is spear in Spain, beneath one sceptre shall unite, owning for capital, lady of the land, the goodly city hither sends your band. 11. Ora, pois, gente ilustre, que no mundo Deus no grêmio católico conserva, redemidos da pena do profundo, que para os condenados se reserva, por vos dotar o que perdeu o imundo Lúzbel, com sua infame e vil caterva, pois sabeis alcançar a glória humana, fazei por não perder a soberana. And now, were earth established, race renowned, whom God in Catholic bosom hath conserved, redeemed from horrid pains of hell profound, for hosts of damned heavenry reserved, dowered with the losses of Lusbel imund, Lusbel, by vile and vulgar spirits served, since all earth's glories ye have learned to gain, Where lest ye lose the glory sovereign. Canto 10, after stanza 141. Daqui saindo irá, donde acabada, sua vida será na fatal ilha. Mas prosseguindo a venturosa armada, a volta de tão grande maravilha, verão a nau vitória celebrada ir tomar porto junto de Sevilha, depois de haver cercado o mar profundo, dando uma volta em claro a todo o mundo. Hence shall he wend his way, and end the light of life, when landed on that fatal isle. Nor less his ventures fleet shall wing her flight, returning homeward from such miracle. The far-famed ship, Victoria, men shall sight, anchored in safest waters by Seville, when she had girdled ocean plain profound, and circled earth in one continuous round. End of the Rejected Stanzas End of the Lucid by Luigi